the sun don't make you free, then you are free indeed. I seen a lot of hopes, heard a lot of lies. But when I read the word, it just no compromise. So I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest with you, yeah. I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest with you, yeah. I seen a lot of hopes, heard a lot of lies. But I'ma be honest, I'ma be. If I can be totally honest. Talking about wine, you know we the finest. We made in the image of God. So choose your words wisely when trying to describe us. I know when they find us, we so weak at heart. But we gotta ask, where does it start? Honestly, we used to have a bond with the most high God to the sin. We was here just two of the part. Now we doing our part to bring it back now. And I pray the Lord forgive us for our background. Honestly, the honesty is the best situation that we can be in when the Lord is coming back down. Lord is coming back now. And I know we all wanted to end, but keeping these commandments is where it begins. I ain't just a this for none of my friends. And as a friend, you should understand what it takes for me to be a better man in the truth to stand in the booth and tell you the truth even when you're wrong even when you're right it doesn't matter what i'm telling you or say your life whether you take it or leave it that is up to you but you can't tell me that i didn't tell the truth so whenever he returns what is your excuse he already know you might as well just tell the truth i remember reading that the truth will set you free and if the sun don't make you free then you are free indeed i seen a lot of hopes heard a lot of lies but when i read the word there's no compromise so I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest with you, yeah. I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest with you, yeah. I seen a lot of hopes, heard a lot of lies. But I'ma be honest, I'ma be honest, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. yeah. No turning back, I'm stuck, I'm true, I'm holding to like I'm just glue. It's you and me, it's me and you against the world, I can we lose? Uh, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Yeah. Well, but the father told us to, yeah. Put them all in the daylight. We're the ones in the spotlight. Be like, yeah, I'm right. Do the shade, you don't want it with the sunlight. Real Jews in the cut light. Blacker than a Klondike. Who that is, that's us. Gonna be here like every night. We gon' rule the world. We gon' rule the world. Gonna be here like every night. We gon' rule the world. We gon' rule the world. I remember reading that the truth will set you free. And if the sun don't make you free, then you are free indeed. I seen a lot of hopes, heard a lot of lies. But when I read the word, there's no compromise. So I'ma be honest. I'ma be honest. Check, check. Let's rise and face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpet. Trumpet down. Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord, not because we watch us above all, but because you've given us the tone of grace, having mercy upon us. Deal with us with compassion. Bless us, Lord. Continue be with us wherever we go, whatever the leadership is taking this vision, that we, we back him up 100%. Because this is your son's vision. This is Christ's vision that we must establish on this earth. Look out for us. Protect us. Do not let our enemy have power over us. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, our Father, which is in heaven, honor be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us. Lead us not into temptation. They were some all evil. We also pray for our leadership. You may strengthen them. The word that brother about, uh, Bishop about to win out, that may be good, for, good medicine for us. Each one of us need these words to be built up, to be strong men, strong sisters in this church. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 We also pray for those that are sick, Father. Heal them quickly and speedily. Uh, Sister Amina, Father, heal the sister quickly and speedily. Then the other brothers and sisters, they call upon you at this minute, at this hour, at this second. 
Send you a healing power to heal the brothers and sisters quickly and speedily by building that going to build their faith. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Men of Israel, sons of God, patient saints, sons of God, hand salute. Salute down, face Sisters, to the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Well, all praise to the Lord. Ah, so, I don't know if y'all ever been in that thing called, called uh, Clubhouse. What the hell is wrong with this chair? These guys kept me up to dag on four in the morning, that foolishness. That's a good platform, but I ain't doing it. If y'all ain't around, I ain't getting on it. But all praise. If y'all around, then I get on it. But um, today uh, is the first of uh, the first day of the first month according to Esau. We know we don't think this is New Year's Day. Um, I do want to cover that real brief, real brief. Give me um, Deuteronomy 8. Elisha, can you look up the word of Bib for me on Google or wherever you can find it? Uh, who's reading for me? I'll get a lie. Okay, yes, sir. thank you. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 16 and verse 1. Uh, because some of y'all really, some people really think that today is the beginning of the new year. Now, in Esau's world, we do. It is. But according to the Most High God, it is not. I remember I did a, I was just doing a radio show. The brother says, so on your paperwork, when you write a check, you're going to put a, uh, 2020? I said, no, you simple self. Simple Simon. Read that. Yes, sir. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 1. Observe the month of Abib, and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. All right. Let's look up the word Abib. Can you put on the screen the meaning? The definition is what I want. That is not the definition. That is not the definition. All right. Let's look at it. A bit. You ready, Bishop? Uh, yeah, go ahead. A bib. The first month of the ancient Hebrew calendar corresponding to Nisan. Right. Nisan is what the Babylonians called a bib. Can you raise it up? Is there any more under that? Is that... Uh... Go back down. Let me see something. Okay. History and etymology for bib. You see it says literally ear of grain. That's when the grain, corn, and things like that started to come forth. All right. So these things come forth in the spring season. All right. Now, do you have the Bible def definition for us, Alicia? Can you look that up? I just want to see what it says, if it says anything a little different. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, can you read that for us? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Abib, an ear of corn, the month of newly ripened grain. Exodus 13 and 4, 23 and 15. The first of the Jew ecclesiastical year and the seventh of the civil year. It began about the time of the vernal equinox on the 21st of March. That's spring. The vernal equinox is the spring season, which begins around, around the 21st of March, sometime after that. It's the last week in March. Go ahead. It was called Nisan after the captivity, Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 1. On the 15th day of the month, harvest was begun by gathering a sheaf of barley, which was offered unto the Lord on the 16th. All right. So a bib is the, means ear of corn. Let's go to Exodus 12, please. Exodus chapter 12, and let's read verse 1 and 2. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. You see that? It shall be the first month of the year to you. Go ahead. Speak ye unto all oh, the... That was it? Yes, sir. That was okay. it. Okay. The first month of the year to you is what we wanted. So the first month of the year is a bib. 
Okay, jump down to verse 11 so we can see what holiday we keep in, this, in the first month. Yes, sir. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Mm -hmm. It is the Lord's Passover. So in the month of Abib, which is the first month of the year, according to God, in the spring begins, you, the first holiday we keep there is uh, Passover. All right. Hey, give me the, uh, what is in the name, months of the year? So today is so-called January 1st. All right. Can you read that for us? Put it on the screen. Yes, sir. What's in the name, months of the year? We mark time in many different ways. One unit, the month, has been in use for thousands of years. We use their names all the time. But what do the month's names mean? And where do they come from? Take a closer look. Let's go down. Go all the way down. Uh, did you pass it? Right there, that first paragraph, that second paragraph, January. Yes, sir. January is named after the Roman god Janus. As you can see in this print, he had two faces, so he could see the future and the past. He was also the god of doors. See that? So January is named after the Roman god Janus. So anytime you say January, you are saying Janus. And you know what's funny about that? This is a mess. Hey, this is a... Uh, special announcement to the black Hebrew Israelites out there. Give me, watch this. Give me Exodus 23, 13. Look at this. You know how they like to say, you can't say Jesus. Don't say Jesus. That is his name. Say Elohim. Say Yahweh. Say Yahweh Shai. Say Yahushua. But you can't say Jesus. But you say January. Read that. Uh, Exodus chapter 23 and verse 13. And all and in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect, and make no mention of the names of other gods, neither let it be heard out of thy mouth. So they try to use that. Some, not all of them. I'll tell you, all of them ain't the devil. There's a large portion of them. But uh, all of them ain't the devil. But uh, they try to use that to go, see, you're not supposed to say Jesus, because that ain't his name. So look, now, to see the understanding of what that's talking about, look at Joshua 23, verse 7. Here's a precept for that. The book of Joshua, chapter 23, and verse 7. That ye come not among these nations, these that remain amongst you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. That's what Exodus 23 is talking about. Swearing by their names, bowing to them, worshiping them. That's what it's talking about. So, back to January. It comes from the Roman god Jan Janus. Let's go back to that. Go back to that. Now let's get the next month. Raise it up. Right there. Fe February is named after an ancient Roman festival of purification called Februa. Now Februa, that was a festival of orgies. That's what it really was going into. Orgies. That's what they was doing. This festival of purification. It was sex going on there. Okay, raise it up. Right there. March is named after Mars, the Roman god of war. You see that? So March is named after a god. Okay, so far these things, these, the names of the months are ancient gods. Raise it up. Go ahead. April takes its name from the Latin word uh, apere, uh, meaning to open. Just like flowers do in spring. Here's a That's why the, I'm sorry. That's why the new year, according to God, was always in the spring. That's why they have that holiday called April Fool's Day. Because in the ancient times, our people that did not want to convert to celebrating January 1st, they kept celebrating April, they made a day, said these are April Fools. Because they don't want to change their thinking to January 1st. All right, that's where that came from. Raise it. Go ahead. May is named after the Greek goddess Maya. Right. So May is named after another goddess, Maya. Okay. Raise it. June is named after the Roman goddess Juno. See that? June is named after the Roman goddess Juno, the god of marriage and childbirth. She was the wife of Jupiter, king of the gods. That's her right there, allegedly. Raise it up. Mm 
Okay, go ahead. July and August were named after two major figures of the ancient Roman world. The statesman Julius Caesar, on the left above, slightly damaged, and Rome's first emperor, Augustus. So July was named after Julius Caesar. August was named after Augustus Caesar. Raise it up. Go ahead, read that. But what about the rest? September, October, November, and December are named after Roman numbers, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Go ahead. They were originally the 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th months of the Roman year. So now I want you to look at that. This lets you know that the names of September, September is Latin for 7. October is Latin for 8th because it was the 8th month. November is Latin for ninth because it was the ninth month. And December is Latin for 10 because December was the 10th month. So they know the name, they leave that there so that they know what month uh, really is, it is. But our people, our people don't know. Our people be clueless. January 1st, that's the first month of the, no, it's not. So the, even the scholars know that's why they left them four months just like that, that they always have a record to know for themselves what month and what time it is. It's our people that's always clueless, always lost. Okay? So, from there, that was it. That's all I wanted from that. That's all I wanted from that. So, according to this system, this is January 1st, and it started off right. Give me, the, it started off with a bang. Give me the clips from uh, Instagram that I sent you. Right, this was yesterday. Can you play that? Sound? Sound. Shit, this guy is not paying attention, man. Wait, go back. You just missed the whole scene there. Refresh it, yeah. You know why they crash? Look up in the sky. Attention, man. <coughs> Damn! Damn. Thank God. Can you look at that all? See, get videoing. Can you please pay attention? Somebody's I'm not paying attention. I'm paying attention. That guy I know. Fuck, I'm going to be doing it. I'm done. Wow, what is that? Wow, what is that? Wow, what is that? Can you one who drive safely? Give him the next one. So it's all righty then. What's going on now? Esau's New Year. Here we go. Y'all see that light going up? You see that light on the right side? The chariot is right there. You know what that chariot is saying? Lord, you want me to blast them now? No, I'm not sure. Just hold on. Hold on. Y'all see that chariot stop right there on the right side. It ain't moving. Right there. See it? Wow. So now people were all excited and said, What the hell is that? Give me that. We went over this a couple of weeks ago. Zechariah 5, we're going to read one through four. Yes, sir. Uh, this, you, you, you're going to start off Esau's new year with the chariots. Zechariah 5, one through four, please. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 1. Then I turned and lift up mine eyes and looked. And behold, a flying roll. So this flying roll, as we're going to read, is what America and the European nations call UFOs. Go ahead. And he said unto me, what seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. Mm -hmm. The length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof 10 cubits. Read. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So are people shocked? You got people to, I, I want to get on. No, no, the Bible says this is the curse curse 
It is, that's, a curse is not a good thing. A curse is not a good thing. Read that part again. Yes, sir. Then said he unto me, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Read. For every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side, according, un, according to it. And every one that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side, according to it. So Zechariah looks up at the chariot. He can read what it says at beneath it. It's, it's, uh, what did it say, that part again, the first one? Uh, for every one that stilleth shall be cut off as on this side. So meaning this is a curse for thieves. And it's not talking about Raheem that stole sneakers or Tic Tac. It's talking about major thieves that steal countries and continents. Mm -hmm. Then it says, and on the, on the other side, he could read where it says, uh, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as on that side, according to it. Here in America, they make you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. So Zechariah is reading the curses written underneath the chariot. Go ahead. Verse 4. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. And the curse shall enter. See, the one we just saw was Australia. When you read into the history on Australia, they stole Australia. Esau decimated the black and the blacks that were there, what do they call them? Um, Tasmania. Tasman what is it? Tasmania. Aborigines Aboriginal. of Australia. They're like a mix of Indian and so called African, well, Shemites. Elam and uh, Shemitic. Elam, Elam is Shemitic. Uh, East Indian and black mix. There's a heavy mix in there. That's where they got some strange looks and features. So. When you read the history, they killed hundreds and thousands of them. Read. Verse 4. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. The first one we saw was on, over here in America. It went to car crash. I said, okay, now the, them chariots is here too. Go ahead. And into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. In the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. Go ahead. And it shall remain. Hey, well, let, me, let me see that right there. Right, that right there. That right there. Let's take a, oh, it just popped in my mind. Into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. When you go to court, did they make you swear in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai? No! So what is it talking about? His name, give me that in Revelation 19.10, I believe it is. Yes, sir. His name. For you bug outs out there, read that. Revelation chapter 19, verse 13. Thank you. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And his name is called the Word of God. His name is called the Word of God. So in Zechariah, when it says, um, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, they make us swear, people swear falsely on the Bible, on the Word of God. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about a Hebrew pronunciation. So just stop it. Anyway, read on. What verse you at? Verse 4, you read again? Yeah, read it again. Zechariah 5, verse 4. <laughs> I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it, with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. You see that part right there? It shall remain in the midst of his house. These chariots ain't going nowhere. We might not see them today, but they're always here, the Lord is saying. And then it's going to tell you what they're going to do. It said, and shall consume. The word consume there means destroy. And shall destroy it with the timber. Timber is wood. Destroy it with the wood thereof and the stones thereof. If, in case you didn't know, buildings are made of wood and stone. Buildings are made of wood and stone. Societies are built up of wood and stone. The Bible has prophesied these chariots, what the world calls UFOs, is here for a curse to destruction. That's what the Bible says. That's what the word of God says. Now, now that we went through all that, now I'm getting to my topic. Today's topic is one of my favorite topics. My spouse ain't right. Now, I left it like that for a reason. Because, you know, if, if you say my wife ain't right, they get offended. If I, it, I, I could have said my husband ain't right, but because the brothers wouldn't mind. So I said, let me make it generic. 
my spouse ain't right. And this goes, this is a shout out to all the many backdoor marriages out there in Israel. If you use a backdoor marriage, this is for you. So we try to help brothers and sisters. We try to counsel brothers and sisters. Let's read Hebrews 13, 4. Let's just open up with that. Yes, sir. The book of Hebrews chapter... And today is going to be a, a lesson of healing. You're going to be healed if you're all right. But if you're crazy, I can't help you. Come on. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage in, is honorable in all. Go ahead. And the bed undefiled. And the bed is... Un, I'm going to come back to that part right there a little later on in the lesson. The bed undefiled. Go ahead. But whoremongers. But whoremongers. And adulterers. Mm -hmm. God will judge. Let me give you, there's two expressions in the world. You get what you pay for, and you get what you deserve. You get what you pay for, and you get what you deserve. That's some heavy stuff right there. What do you mean by that? This is what I mean. Hey, he said here, baby, listen, listen, in case your brothers didn't know, I know you single brothers, a woman is a bill. A woman is a bill. So you get what you pay for. Right. Your, your wife look like Harry Tubman. You get what you pay for. <laughs> you get, and another part, remember, never forget this. You get what you deserve. That part right there, you get what you get because that's what you deserve. Here's the proof. Sirach 13, 14. Here's the proof, the evidence. The book my of spouse ain't right. This is for my spouse ain't right. Watch this. The book of Sirach, chapter 13, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord all thy life and call upon him for thy salvation. This is what everybody says. I love the Lord. I'm going to call on the Lord for the, my salvation. Go ahead. Every beast loveth his like. Every beast loveth his like. And every man loveth his neighbor. And every man loveth his neighbor. Uh -huh. All flesh consorteth according to kind. And a man will cleave to his like. All flesh, sisters. Brothers, all flesh consorteth according to kind, and a man will cleave to his like. You get what you deserve. So guess what? A revolutionary man looks for and needs a revolutionary woman. A godly man is going to get a godly woman. A high-value man will get a high-value woman. An average man will go and get an average woman. A broken bum brother going to get a ratchet hoe. I'm going to just keep it 100 with you. If you a bum, broke brother, you're going to get that ratchet hoe. That's what you deserve. That's what you paid for. You know what? Watch this. Look at Sirach 26, 23. Sirach 26, verse 23. Sirach chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Again, this is a shout out to all you backdoor marriages out there because y'all be the first ones mad, always want to go to council. Why? Because you did some sneaky, sleazy thing in the congregation. Now you got hit. Now brother's mad. The sister's mad. They don't like each other. They don't get along. Why? Because you was doing some sneaky behind the scenes, the same things you did in the world. You came in as truth in the congregation and did the same thing. Read it again. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Y'all thought I was being funny when I said a, a, a ratchet hoe going to get with a bum broke brother. They deserve each other. They was made for one another. That's what they deserve. You get what you pay for. Go ahead. But a godly woman, but is, a godly woman what? is given to him that feareth the Lord. You see that? Everybody wants that. But nobody wants to go about it the way God says go about doing that thing. And listen, now, whatever level you're at, whether you are a revolutionary man or woman, because guess what? There are some sisters who are more revolutionary minded than brothers. And we have seen because this revolutionary woman, like, oh, and I get that from uh, Sister Asada Shakur. Shout out to Sister Asada Shakur in Cuba. Um... You get a sister who's been in the truth. She's about, she wants her nation raised up. She loves her people. But she's so desperate. She's so desperate for any old kind of dang-a-lang 
Dang a lang, dang a lang. She gonna run, get this dude over here, and he gonna sap, suck the spirit out of her. Now she ain't, that mindset she once had is gone. Gone with the wind. Now, whatever level you're at, listen to what I'm about to say. You can always upgrade. And when I say upgrade, I'm not talking about the other person. I'm talking about you. So this is for you bum broke brothers. If you're a bum broke brother, you can upgrade. Sister, if you're a ratchet hoe, if you're a skis, you can upgrade yourself. The, how, how? The question is, but how? The first thing you got to do after you repent is apply 2 Corinthians 13.5, please. This is the first thing. We'll give you the steps. How to upgrade. Upgrade is another way for how do I change? How do I improve myself? This goes for brothers and sisters. Go ahead. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. So the first thing when you're trying to upgrade, improving yourself, is examination. You got to take a deep breath. <sighs> Get a pen and paper. Sit down and write down your strengths and your weaknesses. This is self-examination. What you really want to do is you want to you identify your flaws, your personality traits. That's not right because you know you, you couldn't keep a man and he couldn't keep a woman. What's wrong with you? Now you got to sit down and go, why, Lord? What's wrong with me? And if you don't know, and if you're still in contact with the person that previously dumped you, ask the he or she, why did you dump me? What was wrong with me? Because believe it or not, some people can't self-examine themselves. The better people can sit down and go, better-minded people can sit down and go, I know my flaws, I'm like this, I'm like that, and I get it from this place and that place, this is what happened to me, this is why I'm like that. Other brothers and other sisters will be like, I don't know what's wrong with me. They are in denial. And denial is not a river in Africa, okay? You will just deny everything, okay? So the first thing you got to do is examine yourself. Okay, then what's the next step? The next step, Romans 12 and 1. Watch this. Book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1. Now, again, we're going to go through this class. Some people listening, I keep hitting this damn button. Some people listening and some going... They're going to crumble us up and throw it in the garbage. I ain't listening to nothing he say. All right. You're going to get what you deserve. <laughs> Read that. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. That you present your bodies, your bodies. A living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now I want to pause there. That you present your body a living sacrifice. To who? To God. Everybody knows, everybody quotes that. I present my body a living sacrifice to God. Let's examine God's sacrifices though. You think God wants your body? Okay. Let's look at, I'm going to give you an analogy of what God wants. Get Malachi chapter 1 verse 8. This is a real sacrifice. I'm just going to give an example for what God wanted in a sacrifice in the literal sense. Then I'm going to bring it to the spiritual sense. Watch this. The book of Malachi, chapter 1 and verse 8. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice. Now, you want to sacrifice a lamb, a ram to God. Will you give him a blind sacrifice? The sheep ain't got no eyes. Israel was going, trying to give that to the Lord. Read it again. Yes, sir. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice. Is it not evil? Is it not evil? That's evil, the Lord says. You're going to sacrifice to the God of gods a blind lamb. Go ahead. And if you offer the lame and sick. And wait, wait a minute. Some of them, some of our people was offering lame, sick lambs. They can say, I don't want to give him the good lamb. Give God that sick one. Give him that one over there. It's sick and lame. Go ahead. Is it not evil? Isn't that evil? Go ahead. Offer it now unto thy governor. He said, why don't you offer it now to your governor? During the time, one of the governors, for example, was like Nehemiah. Offer it to him. See if he'll accept a sick lamb, a blind lamb. Go ahead. Was that it? No, sir. Offer it now unto thy governor. 
Will he be pleased with it? Will he be with pleased thee? with it? Go ahead. Or accept thy person? Or will he accept your person? You offered him a blind sacrifice? A, a sick, infected animal? Was that it? No, sir. Saith the Lord of hosts. That was the addition. Okay, so now I want you to think about it. The Lord wants the best sacrifice. He don't want no blind sacrifice. He don't want no sick sacrifice. He don't want no lame sacrifice. What? Let's go. Now watch this. Watch this, watch this. Give me 1 Corinthians 7, 4. I think that's what I wrote there. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. Now this is for you that want to get married. You say, Lord, take my body. Lord, I'm your sacrifice. Now you want to get, Lord, bless me with a spouse. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. Mm -hmm. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body, but the wife. So the, your bodies belong to your spouse. Okay. Now, I want you to think. I want you to think. The first thing you got to do is offer your body a living sacrifice to the Lord, meaning you are, you are given to the Lord. Now you want to get married. Okay. And now I want you to just, this goes back to self-examination. This is for you brothers and sisters with five stomachs. Just think about it. Sisters that want to, uh, rather than take care of her skin, she want to use fake up. Fake up is witchcraft. Y'all know what fake up is, right? That fake stuff. And they, they hide all imperfections. Mm -mm. How about drink more water? And you know what a sister said? I don't, I don't want to do that because it takes too much time to get good skin. I kid thee not. Wouldn't it be more advantageous? Let me, how many brothers want a sister where she got all kind of things growing out of her face? How about take care of your skin? If you need to go to a dermatologist, go there. Present your body a living sacrifice. Nobody wants you like that. <laughs> take care of yourself. Eat better. Heal your skin. That way when, you, when your man see you, he don't jump and run out of the room talking about who that nigga in there. And you talk about, that me, babe. That's me. That ain't the same uh, woman I was with last night. I took my fake up off. And he want to fight you now because you ain't the same person. If you had just taken the time when you do your self-examination, and you know self-examination and to get your body in tune, it takes time. It don't take a week. It don't take a month. Sometimes it takes a year or two years. Well, guess what? Some sisters have been in this truth one year, two years, three years. I'm just talking about them. I'm just talking about them for this moment. Well, in that time, sister, you could have been drinking more water. Water. Stop drinking the Coca-Cola. Stop drinking the Pepsi. Stop drinking the Kool-Aid and the lemonade. Drink some daggone water. Flush out your system. That way your sin skin starts to clear up. You'd be like, hey, them bumps is leaving me. Hey. All of, what's them things that be sticking out people's faces? No, I got one of my notes, not that. Uh, <laughs> what's the, it's uh, skin tags. Is it a skin? Moles. Come on. You know, there's two uh, videos on YouTube. You get a string, you tie it around that thing when you go to bed. And when you wake up, that thing, be, boom, off your face. There's thing you can, you can fix your face. You can fix it. Now, I know brothers like to say, I'm not, I don't want to be carnal. Bro sisters, brothers are carnal. They look at the face first. Face number one. Am I right, brothers? Then they look downtown. Let me see what she's working with there. Is she shaped like the number eight or a zero? I'm telling you, that's some men are. Call us uh, vain. Is the word vain? Is that what they call us? That, that's the first thing in men's mind. Doesn't the Bible say a man, give me five, five minutes. A man loves nothing more. Yes, sir. Than the beauty of a woman. I'm telling you. Says, oh, you so calm. I'm giving you Bible. Oh, yeah, we're going to see that thing. Read that thing. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 36, verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. You see that, sisters? Uh, uh, the beauty of a woman, he, can, he feel good in the morning. I feel good. Dun, 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 dun. He be like, yeah, that's my wife. I did. That's my wife. Hey, bro, hey, hey meet my wife. Right. You don't want to be that sister when he go, he want to walk way ahead of you. And the brothers, yo, where your wife? And she right, she right there, she right there. Cause you are, what the hell is this? Hey, hey, show me the video on fake up. Show me fake up. 
It ain't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at Faco. <laughs> what the hell? Y'all crazy. The phone is ringing. She's doing something. She put makeup on. Hey, what's up? What took you so long to answer, though? I didn't hear my phone ringing. All right, man. What, you got to move the bar yeah. at the bottom. Nothing, oh, he put these roaches together. He can make a blur. Oh, all right, man. Fuck with Yeah, she put her face on at the bottom. You see the bottom right? Wait a minute. Is that a man? What the hell is wrong with y'all? Anyway, get that thing off the screen. So now, uh, go back to Romans 12. Go back to Romans 12. Yes, sir. So, see, and I'm going to tell you something. This truth is about change. If you come, listen, you come in this truth, a nooker, nooker, can I say that word? It's nice. I'm not saying the GG, nooker, N U K A, nooker. And you, a year later, you still a nooker. This truth has not profited you at all. You're supposed to have changed your ways. Sister, come in. Here we go in one high holy. This is back in New York. High holy, they come. You know, brothers, when they meet the sisters, they don't do the little dance, a little two-step. This sister bends and grabs her ankles and starts jiggling. Everybody, whoa, 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 whoa. Sister ain't changed yet. She had a little spandex on. Then she lifted her leg up like that. Everybody was like, she ain't changed. Bro, no, you don't want to marry her. That ain't marriage. But she ain't right. Here it is a high holiday. She making it clap. She lift the leg up straight to the ceiling. You know a pole dancer when you see one. Oh, she used to do the pole. Read that again. <laughs> yes, sir. Verse 1 again. Yes, yeah, verse, verse 1 again. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. So your body becoming a living sacrifice, meaning I'm going I'm to help you out here. Let's take care of our bodies. Let's take care of our bodies. So the foods we used to eat, we don't eat those foods no more. The amounts of foods we used to eat, we don't eat that much no more. Why? Because now your body belongs to God. Let me take care of my temple because you want that spirit to come in. And you always got these rotunda people on Christ in Christianity. They be 300 pounds and over talking about they got the Holy Spirit. No, you, you got the Holy Pork Chop on you. I don't know what the hell's wrong with you. Ain't nobody, I ain't listening to you. You can't di discipline your eating and you want me to listen to you? We sitting there belly all up and the, they got a plate of food sitting on their belly. Yeah, the, the most high is dealing with me. Burp, get the hell out of here. I ain't listening to that. This guy can't discipline himself. Give me that in Ciroc about your body. Uh, Ciroc is 31 or 37. You know, eating, come on. Yes, sir. Um, 30, I want 37, 29 27. down. Okay, yes, sir. Sirach chapter 37, verse 29. Start at 28. Verse 28. Start at 27. Sirach chapter 37, verse 27. Listen good. My son, prove thy soul in thy life and see what is evil for it and give not that unto it. See what is evil for you in your life. You, and you learn that through time and examination. Watch. Verse 28. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Let me give an example in terms of food. In term, you ever get a baby? Well, you got babies. Everybody got little kids. And you'll give them something, and you'll find out they're allergic to that. And you say, no, no, no. They can't eat this no more because they, get, they break out in hives or something. Or like chocolate. Everybody loves chocolate. Some people can't eat or should not eat chocolate. Some people eat chocolate, they be fine. Others, they start getting all kind of bumps every pop, 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 pop. Pimples start growing out their face. You don't need to eat no more chocolate. It's not good for you. You got to know what's good for your body and what's not good. Read it again. Yes, sir. 28. Sirach 37, 28. For all things are not profitable for all men. Neither have every soul pleasure in everything. Go ahead. Be not unsatiable. In any dainty thing. Don't be greedy, or unsatiable means greedy, in any dainty thing, meaning sweets. Why? Because too much sweets leads to sickness, leads to diabetes, just for example. Go ahead. Nor too greedy upon meats. Nor too greedy upon meats. Why? Because that leads to sickness. Being too greedy upon meats leads to things like colon cancer. Go ahead. 
For excess of meats bringeth sickness. So God is telling you, excess of meat, bro. You ate steak seven days a week. Give your body a break. Let it give it time to digest. That's what the Sabbath was all about. Giving your body a temple to rest. Eat greens more. Eat, eat, eat. Let the Sabbath be your day of diet. That's how you should look at that thing. Or fast. How about that? Give your body a break. Read that again, verse 30. Yes, sir, verse 30. For excess of meats bringeth sickness, and surfeiting will turn into cola. So surfeiting, surfeiting means excess also. It's another word for excess of anything will turn into cola. Cola is another form of sickness, like diarrhea. Go ahead. By surfeiting have many perish. By excess of eating has many perish. So God is teaching us with our bodies as a living sacrifice, if you eat too much, you will die. Go ahead. But he that taketh heed prolongeth his life. He said, if you listen to this and obey what I've written here, you're going to prolong your life. This is why you see people dying at the age of 28. I ain't talking about gunshots. I'm talking about bad diet. But I follow all the dietary laws. So do cows. You know, elephants follow the dietary law. But do you see how much they weigh? So there are such things as fat vegans. When I see fat vegans, I really laugh. That's a cow. They have lived in their life like a cow and an elephant. They just graze. They just gra you know they don't eat. They graze. I'm grazing. You know that that mouth never stopped chewing. Okay, let's go on back now. Go back to Romans 12. Yes, sir. I want to present my body as a living sacrifice to God. The hell is this? God looking at you like, what kind of body? What, I'm going to bring my spirit in that thing right there. Read that again. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Remember, the Lord don't want no sick, lame, blind. He said, no, you, you, I want your body to be right. Go ahead. Holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. So that's your reasonable service to do what God says. That's the literal sense. Give yourself to the Lord and do what his laws command. Go ahead. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Uh-oh, here we go right here. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, once you present your body, the apostle Paul says, now I want you to change your th way of thinking. Change the way you think. And don't be conformed to this world because our thoughts, believe it or not, is television. You ever see these? I, 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 I don't want to say it, but I got to say it. There's a sister named Monique, a comedian. She was one of those comedians that said to be comfortable in your overweight body, your unhealthy overweight body. She says, don't let people body shame you. That's being conformed to this world. And there's another singer. I think her name is Lizzo. Lizzo. Y'all know who I'm, anybody know what I'm talking about? Lizzo. I am comfortable in my overweight, unhealthy body. Mm -mm. Never be comfortable. Remember, this truth is about tr change, not conformity, but change. That's why it says, "Be not conformed to this world." Stop following what the world says. The world says you can eat uh, seven times a day. Don't do that thing. The world says, eat what you want to eat, eat as much as... No, no, no. That's not what God says. That's why he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. The word transform means changed. By the renewing of your mind, your thinking got to change. All our thinking got to change. Sure, I love me some chicken. Jerk chicken, my favorite. But I know I, can, I cannot and should not eat that seven days a week. It's got GMOs and I've research. I said, it ain't, mm -mm, there's something wrong in this. Steak the same way. Let's cut down on that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm reading this. We got to start applying these things, what the Bible says. Read that again, verse 2. Yes, sir. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, that acceptable, and perfect will of God. You know what that part That you may prove what is that good, an acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's look at those first four words. That you may prove. In order for you, if I'm in the world, in order for you to prove to me that this Bible is real, I need to see what in you? Change. 
transformation. If I knew you as that, as that street brother, that nasty, gnarly nooker, grimy, just skis on the sisters and all that, and now you're coming to me with the Bible. If I don't see a substantial change in you, I'm not listening to nothing you say. Likewise with the sisters. If I knew you as the roundaway girl, the ratchet hoe, who all the dude tapped in the buildings, now I hear you come giving me a flyer. I'm looking at you. And I'm listening to what you say. If I don't see a substantial change in you, your body and your mind, I, then once I see that change, you know what? There might be something to what he or she is saying. I see a change in him or in her. Y'all see that change? Yeah, I see it. She, she ain't the way she used to be, him either. But we're going to watch you for a while. You ever see people in your neighborhood? They're going to watch you. Your family is the same way. Family go, no, 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 that's Ray Ray, that's Pookie, and, and that's Shaniqua over there. Uh-uh. Just watch. They don't believe that. They're going to watch you. Some they're going to watch you for months, some years. Then one day they're going to say, they're serious about this thing. I'm going to join that thing. If, if, if God could change that brother and that sister, I'm going to change too. That's what it means when it says that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Because now you proved it through your life, through your body and your mind. What are you going to say, Lava? I see you're going to say something. Okay. So, the, uh, the expression of you have to accept me as I am is one of the reasons there's a lot of single people in here, mainly women, who say you have to accept me as I am. Mm -mm. The Bible is about change. The Bible is about change. Hey, hey, give me the video about hair. Give me the video about hair. I'm going to show you something. Now, I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not trying to make fun of nobody. But that, that whole thought of if he don't accept me as I am, then he ain't for me. Mm -mm, sister, you got it wrong. You got it all wrong. You got to change. How long is that video? Okay, it ain't that long. Put that on the screen and put the, uh, put the uh, disclaimer on it, please. Pay close attention. Too long ago, we featured Turn the story up. of Diamond, who was suffering with self-esteem issues due Turn to up. unexplained facial hair. She was desperate for answers and came to us to get to the root of the problem. I have a beard. I've tried hair removal cream, waxing, but every day, it just keeps coming back. The real me is a freak and I just want to stay home. I'm Dr. Nita. Would you say that this hair growth has caused you to have depression? Yes. Have you ever thought about harming yourself? I have thought about it. I think about the things that people said every single day, and it just, it plays in my mind, and I just can't get rid of it. Based on what we found, it looks like you do have PCOS, which stands for Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. So, we have a diagnosis, and now we can get to work. One of the things you mentioned is that you're just so tired of before you go anywhere, shaving and plucking and all that. So there are solutions for that. And Dr. Sergey Zitar is going to offer you six laser hair removal treatments completely free of charge. Since that episode aired, Diamond has received complimentary laser treatments for her facial hair. Today, she's ready to show off her results. And with the help of celebrity hairstylist Kim Kimball, who works regularly with superstars like Beyonce and Shakira, she also has a brand new look to match her new self-confidence. Kim, she gonna wow us? She's definitely gonna wow you. We gave her some beautiful hair extensions. She added color. She wants to look like Sierra, and I think she looks <laughs> fabulous. Well, I, I, I know. Are you all excited to see her? I know I am. <laughs> Here's a reminder of Diamond before. And here is Diamond now. Come on out and join us, Diamond. Wow. You look beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Oh my gosh, Sierra who? <laughs> right. Like, right? Like Diamond, Sierra who? <laughs> Oh, man. Thank you for having me back, guys. I feel great. I feel wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I want. That's what I want. So, thank you. So, my point is this. 
she knew that she needed to change. She wanted to get married and all that. She, in her mind, I gotta, something got to be done. But how come when we come in the truth, no, I'm not going to change. Then you sit around single. You've been in the truth five years, eight years, because you don't want to change nothing about yourself. Okay, you're going to wait another five years, another ten years. We all got to change. Every last man, woman, boy, girl in this truth, this truth is about changing, okay? Growing, changing our body, changing our spiritual eye, the way we think, the way we talk. Everything must transform. And that's what we, some of us have not figured out yet. Because the behavior is people have to take you the way you are. If that's the case, then <laughs> you understand? No man, no man going to accept that. Everybody has something to sell, especially when you're dealing with a single sister. You got something to offer. Yeah, I mean, like, if you really think the thing you have to offer, guess what? Uh, like Bishop said, some men ain't going to take you like that. Then especially some of you who have medical issues, when we're trying to tell you burn the fat, you'll take offense by that. And you're not seeing us trying to get in your, in your good half. But think about it, for example. The mind have a way of thinking, right? The sisters that, one sister I said to the sister, I said, sis, you ready to get a Lord? She said, yes. I said, I think you should burn the fat. That's what I tell her. She told me her answer to her, hey, if, if the brother ain't going to take me like that. But I said, sis, you just call me. You ask me for counsel. So I'm giving you that counsel. Mm -hmm. What do you need? Oh, no, no. You know, she got, uh, he got to take me like that. I said, if that's the case, then you're going to be single for a long time. But they don't, want the, they don't want you to give them the answer they need. Mm -hmm. Why call us then? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So some women say they want their revolutionary man because they love this truth. But guess what, sisters? If you want a revolutionary man in this truth who's about gathering the 12 tribes of Israel, keeping the commandments, you too must be that same mindset got to be the same way. And brothers, sisters like, now sis, women in general, they like men with what? No, nobody know what I'm talking about now? Power. They like that thing. They say, I want the brother with rank. I want the brother with authority. I don't want the little dude over here that's uh, been in the truth for a, a year and he's still got a black shirt on. That's what some of them be saying. But guess what? So you got to wait till that brother grows in the spirit. And guess what? You got to carry your own weight, sister. I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Proverbs 31. Watch this. Proverbs 31 is a deadly chapter. Deadly. Some sisters break out in hives when they hear you. Just say the word. Proverbs 13. Shh. Proverbs 31. Shh. Damn. Proverbs 31. Give me verse 23. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates. See, that's the sister. Sisters want that. Her husband is known in the game. Everybody know my husband. My husband's this. My husband, that's how women are. Women don't like that simp brother in the corner. Don't nobody know him. He's old. Don't nobody know. She no, no, I want that dude over there. Everybody know him. I want him. Read it again. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. When he sitteth among the elders. She want to say, that's my husband right there. Now watch this. Jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see the difference with her? She didn't get her accolades just on, that's my husband. She put in work. She, her work spoke for her. She had a revolutionary man. Guess what? She had a revolutionary mindset too. She put her bricks in. Everybody, you ever see these married couples? I say, I'll go to a congregation. Who get married? Brother so-and-so. Well, who he marries? Uh, that sister right there. What's her name? I don't know. Hey, come here, sis. I'll uh, call another sister. What's that sister's name right there? I don't know. Don't nobody know her. But the brother want to marry her. Bro, you simple as hell. You simple. And sister or the vice versa. Who that brother? Don't nobody know him. These are the ones that always in the back door have all kind of problems. So read that verse again. Yes, sir. Proverbs 31 and 31, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see that? So a revolutionary thinking man, he don't want no idle woman. No idle woman that sits around the house and eat chicken and steak all day. 
She don't do nothing around the house. She got no hobby. She has no aspirations of doing nothing with her life. She's a big, fat bill. That's all you're just paying to feed this thing. She ain't about nothing. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but when you don't prove her, when you don't prove her long to verify if she, because women can fake it. I'm, yeah, but I, bro, I'm about this truth. We have several cases like that. The sister, she's been a year, two years. She said, I'm about this truth. Oh, I love the Lord. Blah, 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 blah. She got good game. Soon as she hooked up with the brother, she quit her job. She sat back and started gaining weight and scratching. She wasn't about nothing. Barely do the laundry. Brother come home to a house full of SH and just stink. He mad. She don't even want to cook. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's why we say y'all better give her time. You better make sure you don't, you, you, when you, if you don't prove along to verify if she's truly revolutionary, you get stuck with a big bill that's really, she a bum. She's a bum bee. Uh, give me Sirach 25 and 17. Ecclesiasticus 25 verse 17. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 25, verse 17. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face. And darkeneth her countenance. And darkeneth her countenance. Like sackcloth. Now, that's, a, that's that inner, that inner demon she got starts to come through her face. You ever see a sister? The first, as soon as you look at her, you go, she pretty. But when you talk to her, it's like, yo, this woman's a damn demon. And you, that beauty she once had is gone. You don't even see in the same light no more. Read. Watch this. Yes, sir. Verse 18. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when, he, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. See that? See that? He got played. She got her revolutionary man. He sits in the gates with the leadership, with the elders. But his wife name always come up in some bull SH. That's what it means. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth it, shall sigh bitterly. Brother so-and-so, Captain so-and-so, your wife said A, B, and C. Now she done did this. Oh, God, this damn woman going to be the death of me. Here we go again. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I gave you two examples. One sister, she's revolutionary. She got her husband's good standing. She put bricks in. The other side right here, her whole countenance start to change after you get married to her. Now, you, you, every time you hear your wife now, you mad, you bitter. Because she ain't no damn good. She played you, bruh. She played you. Some women got game. She said, I'm going to get them. I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to hold it tight for a year till, I, till we get married. Then when I got them, I'm going to let myself go. And he's going to find that I ain't about nothing. Woo! Some of y'all sitting here right now mad as hell. What are you going to say? Yeah, yeah, that brother. Some uh, of y'all on the podium mad as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah that brother was in... Uh, yeah, he's in his he's in his room, heard in two party talking in the bathroom. What's yeah, she, uh, she uh, brother in the room, two parties talking in the bathroom. All he know is only him and his wife in the house. He heard that we spun in the bathroom. Yeah, hey, hey, I need you to come down. Listen, I need you to come down. Don't react to nothing, because you know that she got to get that dude. That the demon say, I want to come out now. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, <laughs> don't say nothing. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, brother, start hurting voice from the bathroom. Two parties stuck. Now, guess what? Dealing with this one right here, her husband shall sit. No, 17. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkens her countenance like sackcloth. Meaning that inner spirit is just dark. She got a dark spirit on her. An evil spirit. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly. You know when you get married, she's supposed to, let's say she's not where you want her to be yet. You might not be where you want to be yet. But guess what? She's going to glean off what you got. She's going to grow with you. She's going to see how you're growing and, and, and try and match that same spirit. Because she's going to be left behind. But if she just wants to use you, she, let's say she's jealous of you. She's she jealous of you. She, the, the work and accolades you got, she never gets because she got that dark spirit. Now, because every, everybody said, listen, your wife ain't got no works in this truth. Don't nobody know her. Don't nobody want to know her. She take her anger out on the husband 
She called disrespect him in the house, and a lot of it's out of jealousy. Because why? She could never get off that dark spirit. See that verse 17? The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkens her countenance like sackcloth. She could never transform her mind. She never want to transform her mind. So she, now her frustrations is taken out on you. Like uh, whose wife was like that? Uh, David's wife. Remember he had a wife. What was her name? Mike, Mikhail. Uh -huh. They, the Lord set him up as king. Rather than her rejoice, she had an evil spirit. She couldn't stand him. Where's that at? Second Samuel sixteen. Sixteen and six. Yes, sir. Read that. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Six, Second Samuel chapter six. Excuse me. Chapter six. Yes, sir. Second right. Samuel chapter six and verse. We we'll started uh, sixteen, Bishop. Yeah, just get to the point. Yes, sir. Second Samuel chapter sixteen and verse. Let me chapter six, verse sixteen. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, because Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. You would think she would rejoice for her husband. He just won the victory. His glory is her glory. She didn't see it like that. She was a miserable wretch. She's that one. The wickedness of a woman changes her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors and when he heareth it shall sigh bitterly. You get a lot of marriages like that, and it's truth. What are you going to say, Lava? Remember, you make a statement. You said, because of the brother name, he wanna, he's, he's wanting his wife to step her game up. Right. Then he will tell the sister that, listen, I need you to talk to deacon wife or captain wife. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the status I want you to be in. Right. She said, she's hanging with the sister that just walk in. Right, right. And then she get, mad at, she get mad at the husband who tell her that, hey, this is what I expect from you. Exactly. She get mad at the husband. She said, no, no, I just want to hang with the newcomer. Yep. The husband said, no, 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 no. I want you to hang with people that can uplift your spirit. Right. That's not what she wanted. Exactly. So you get married in this truth. The sister should be, let's say she's a young sister. She should be around the senior sisters. In fact, her and her husband should be around the senior couples. Hey, can we come over to your house or invite the older ones over to you? your house for dinner? So you can glean from them. But you know, like Deacon Laba said, some sisters go, no, I'm going to look for that sister that nobody knows way back there. In fact, she came in last week, and that's my friend right there. She can't learn nothing from that sister. She can't grow talking to that sister. And she brings all the bad things she picked up from that sister to her house. Now her house is crumbling and falling apart. And she's like, well, it's your, she's going to blame her husband. It's your fault. Our marriage is failing. No, no, no. The husband see, around the leadership from the older brothers who've been married a long time. You, sister, is around them young teeny bopper sisters who still dancing. Ah, that's my song. What are you hanging around them for? Also, that also goes into you sisters that will surround yourselves around older women that have only been in this truth for maybe six months, and you have called them or you hold them as in the title of mother. That's not your mother. That's not your mother. You have Mother Shamara. You have Mother Aparia. Those are your spiritual mothers, all right? Because the carnal sense of marriage and the spiritual sense of marriage are two different things, all right? So let, I don't want to hear that no more either. That's right. That's right. Now watch. I'm going to show you a video. Hey, give me damage control and put the disclaimer up too. This is a, a, a well, he's new to me. I just came across him, but I, I, I do get a good chuckle off his videos. Because he, he be hitting home on some of them things he be saying. Yeah. Never marry a woman who thinks she's better than you. Jump ahead of that. Jump ahead. Yeah. Never marry this a woman, he said, who thinks she's better than you. This goes back to what we read with David and his wife. She felt because she was the daughter of King Saul, she was better than David. She envied David, her husband. She hated him. Go ahead. It's home for me because I've seen it so often. I've counseled with guys through divorce care, through Christian ministries, through breakups, through so many things. And I've seen so many guys 
that have actually married a woman they absolutely adore, but the woman thinks she's better than you, and ultimately, she's jealous of you. Avoid women who think they are better than you because you can never make them happy. And here's the thing, as your success continues to rise, their anger, their resentment, their animosity towards you will continue to rise. So outwardly, people look at you and say, "Those she's so lucky to have this man. He's a multimillionaire, a good family man, all these other things. And all she's sitting there and saying, it should be me. I'm better than him. Especially, this, this really runs deep, especially in women who are failed actresses and failed models. When you meet a woman who is a struggling local actress, struggling local model, attractive, but she just doesn't have that it factor. You can kick her with her, you can date her, you can hang out with her, but do not make any kind of commitment to her. And for God's sake, don't marry her or have any children. Because one, she is always going to have in her mind any kind of weight I put on, anything that happens is going to potentially hurt this non-existent career she's dreaming about, this fame that she wants, this thing that she cannot have, and especially if you're like Seth Curry and you actually attained it. He married his high school sweetheart. He was a teenage boy and she was a teenage girl. That 15-year-old boy was ecstatic to have that gorgeous girl because she actually grew into her womanness before he grew into his manness. He has finally grown into his man's body, into his man's mind, and become the man a lot of people saw in him. She's still looking at him as the same little boy who was blowing her kisses and kissing her ass as a teenager. And that's what you saw come out. That's what it is. It wasn't that she wants more attention. It wasn't that she wants more guys in her DM. She married a guy that she thinks she's better than. And honestly, she's jealous of him. She's jealous because I'm sitting at home, pumped out three kids, and he's on TV every day. He's getting all the fame. He's getting all the red carpet treatment. He's getting all this. And only time she gets attention is attention that he deflects to her. We wouldn't know about Aisha. Yeah, hold on, mute that staff. thing for me. He tries to thing. put her in the spotlight. Mute that thing. It's true. Bishop, <laughs> you remember when we travel, when we come back home, what we heard? You was on vacation. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You was on vacation. That's her envy, your position. Instead of saying, I cannot believe you put your life in the line. Right. Because yeah. it's a, uh, one day we ain't going to make it back. Right. Right. You understand? But her mindset is you in vacation. Because mm -hmm. she envy you. You understand that she become she uh, she become just like the sister you just mentioned in in uh, Second uh, Samuel. That's what we're dealing with here. Instead of like look at it like the uh, oh that's my husband he's doing a good job for the Lord you you just come on oh you in a uh, uh, yeah you in the other country she's calling you about bills. I'm telling you man that brother is on point. Hey before you start that. He says something heavy, heavy, heavy. That's, that's very heavy in IUIC. He said about the envy where he said, if she thinks she's better than you, do not marry her. That is, that's running heavy in IUIC. And I'm going to tell you this. Especially if you are, have those, what you call bachelor degrees, master degrees, and you don't, you don't even have a high school diploma. And you're making more money than her. She just sit at home, and lay on her back, envy, and she, in her mindset, I am better than you. I am better than you because you never, you don't even have a high school diploma. That's, that's what playing, that's why you see a lot of problem today. The sister mindset is, I'm better than you. Well, sis, if you're better than me, why don't you put your master degree into, to, to use? You got a master degree hanging in the dim wall. Here I am, I don't even finish high school, I'm making 100 grand a year. And you beat her. I didn't hold you back. You hold yourself back. That's what he's saying. We have a lot of that going on in Israel. 100% correct. Roll the tape. He tries to put her in front and center. And guess what? If she had what it takes, she'd already be there. And that's what's not being told. If she had anything that should make her a star or put her on that level, she'd be there. Will Smith married Jada Pinkett. 
Jada Pinkett had a modicum of success, but she was never nowhere close to being what Will was. Look at what Will tried to do with his son. He kept trying to push his son out there, but his son isn't Will. Well, guess what? Aisha ain't Steph. Let me tell you what I fear is going to happen. I fear this is what's going to happen. She's going to end up divorcing him. It's going to get to a point to where it is intolerable. She's already made this faux pas. She's already put it out there. It's out in the ether and she's getting drugged by men. And people are actually looking at her like, what the hell is wrong with you? So she's going to have to pipe down. She's not going to be able to say much about anything, but it is going to tear her apart, tear him apart because it, because at the end of the day, she thinks she's up here and she thinks he's down here. It is not going to change. She does not view Steph Curry as the NBA all-star world champion basketball player. She views Steph Curry as this guy that her mom and dad and her parents told her, you need to marry and secure the bag. She didn't want to be there. She would have rather been a struggling actress in Hollywood trying to get bit parts in commercials, trying to get pickups in, in TV, and, you know, trying to be an extra here or trying to get a, a print commercial or something while it ended up... Uh, dating whoever. Honestly, she'd have been happier that way. I know too many women like this. Trust me, I've seen this in my life. There are women like her who are above average looking. Let's be honest, she's not that fine. I mean, she's attractive, but she ain't model fine. She's pretty, but she ain't all that. She can't handle it. She's not built for it, but she thinks she is. She can't even handle the overflow traffic she gets from her husband. What the hell makes her think she can handle it in the spotlight? But the problem is she's too close to the sun. She's close enough to where she actually thinks she could do just fine. And, and the bad thing is she's seen too many women kind of do this kind of thing. Look what Kamora Lee Simmons did. She actually has had a reasonably successful career, but she was a model, a supermodel in somebody's eyes, but a model nonetheless. What has Aisha Curry done? Other than being married to Steph Curry. But that's not going to change anything. This is going to nag at her, nag at them, until she ends up... Now there's another possible alternative. Steph could try to work behind the scenes with some Hollywood producer, friend, family, and try to throw some work her way and try to get her in Hollywood. But you know what? It'll even be worse because honestly, when she gets up on the screen and it shows that she doesn't have the chops, shows that she doesn't have that it factor, then you got to deal with the fallout of that. When you marry a woman who thinks she's better than you, when you're with somebody who is ultimately going to be jealous of you, who can't play their role, does not like the spotlight being on you, you're signing up for a life of misery. There's going to be this passive aggressive, low level contempt for you because at the end of the day, you're really not what she wanted. You're not what she wanted to do. She wanted something completely else and she's living a life that somebody else planned for her. And even though it's probably the best thing for her, she thinks she can do better. Mm, thank you. Till the next time. That's it. Talk it. All right. Well, that's some heavy stuff right there. He dropped some some nuggets in that thing. Bishop, there's a lot of sisters right now in Israel who think they can do better than their husband. There's a lot of sisters. I see them. They think they can do. When they come, they start talking to you. Their husband's sitting right there. They're sitting right there. The way they're talking, they, they feel like I can do, I can do be better. I can do better. No, sister, you cannot do better. If you can do better, how come you come in that you're single? How can we come in just a single? You could not keep a man. That means you could not do better. You have two kids, no man. Now, you married this blood, you can do better. No. Because that blood that you married, before him, everybody you was messing with, they were niggas. Yes. You two baby daddies, they are niggas. Yes. They are bastard kids, they are niggas. That's the, I'm the, hey, I'm just being for real. I'm just real. That's what they are. Now you, now most I got blessed with this brother. You look at him like, oh, I'm better than him. I can do better. No, sister, you cannot do better. Like Bishop said, you got exactly what you deserve. Get First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians. Hey, so the point with that video is that when you when we, you examine the Proverbs thirty one sister, not only was her husband known like. But, uh, like the brother gave the example of uh, Stephon, what's his name? Yeah, Steph Curry. Curry. Steph Curry. The Proverbs 31 woman put her bricks in. Her name was known. People knew her. It was, she wasn't bitter against her husband. But the sister we read about in Sirach, 25, whose countenance was darkened, 
That's what we that's what we saw there. Who the wife is bitter. She can't, she cannot, like he said, she flew too close to the sun. I thought I had to ponder. I said, flew. That's an old uh uh story. Um, like uh what do you call it? Yeah. Where Icarus, right. He made these wings, he put them together with wax, and he had to get out of prison. And he flew off the top of the prison and he kept flying higher and higher. He got too close to the sun. The wax on the wings started to melt and he fell and died. So he said, when you marry a woman that's jealous of you, she can't even measure up. She flew too close to the sun. That's some heavy stuff. It's gonna, she gonna, that marriage is going to fall apart. And Bishop, you know, sometimes the, uh, the sister will seek her attention or seek her fame from social media. And she'll end up shaming her husband for her for her goal of gaining some spotlight to outshine him. So you got to be mindful of that. That's a heavy point right there. Look at First Corinthians chapter seven and verse one. So, brothers, sisters, y'all got to know your worth. If you might not be worth nothing right now, if you do real self examination, I know we all children of God in here, but there's always room for what? Growth or improvement. Always. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now people often ask, why did the Apostle Paul say that? It's good for a man not to touch a woman. Look at verse 32. Verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. Meaning worry. He that is unmarried, carry for the things that belong to the Lord. How he may please the Lord. So you're focused on serving the Lord when you're not married. That's why Paul said that. Go back to 7 and 1. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Read. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So Paul says, nevertheless... To avoid sexual sin, that's what fornication is. To avoid sexual sins. Let every man have his own wife. Here's the part. Underline this part. And let every woman have her own husband. I don't know what y'all, this polygamy stuff y'all talking about. The Bible says let every woman have her own husband. Ain't no sharing. No, 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 no. That ain't coming until Isaiah 4 kick in, and we ain't in Isaiah 4 days yet, okay? So, until that day, until Isaiah 4 kick in, every woman must have her own husband. You got these brothers talking about, babe, I've been doing research. <laughs> no, you, 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 your rod has been doing research. I've been doing research, hon. You know, because, you know, back in the day, our forefathers, you know what I'm saying, had two, three, four women. You know, you know. But, Raheem, I don't understand. You was learning with the brothers, and it says let every woman have her own. It don't mean that, babe. It don't mean that. Really? And, and, and you, know, you know the kind of women that get stuck like that? Them old desperate women. Them old, I just need any kind of old dang a dang women. Those women that ain't got nothing going on for them, women. She ain't paid a bill all her life. The brother paid for everything. So because he took care of everything, he must follow behind his simple behind as he gets all these ratchet holes on the side. And Lord knows what you're going to catch. She wake up one day, Raheem, I'm scratching down there. What I got was wrong with me. I went to the doctor. I got crabs. Where the hell I get crabs from? Maybe it's from Shaniqua. Who's Shaniqua? That's wife number three. What? And so, and because she got so low self-esteem, she didn't want to wait for a real brother. She got sucking. Alrighty then. Read on. And I'm sorry, BH. I know you're mad at me right now. <laughs> I know you're mad, but I love you. Come on. Verse three. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, mm -hmm. and likewise also the wife unto the husband. Ah, oh, suki suki now. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. That goes into sex. And likewise also the wife unto the husband. Mm -hmm. 
Read. Verse 4. The wife have not power over of, of her body, of her own body, but the husband. Yeah, here, here, here in America, in America, they tell a woman, be transformed. No, they say, they say, be conformed to this world. The women come in Israel, they want to be conformed to this world and say, I don't, I don't, I'm not in the mood. He go and get some anyway. She go, you rape me. This babe, huh? That's not rape. Can you read the verse again? Yes, sir. Verse four. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. You see that? But she don't believe that. You know why? Because she's not been transformed in her mind. She, her mind is America's mind. This is what Paul is showing us. Her mind is TV. You rape me. You're not supposed to do what I don't want you to do. What did it say, Laba? The Bible just tells you don't have power over there. She don't believe that. <laughs> That's why these old American Negro peans, uh-uh. She don't believe that thing. So, bruh, here she go. I got a headache. I, mean, I got a headache. Soon as she come through the door, babe, here's an aspirin. I don't need no aspirin. I ain't got no headache. Good. Get undressed and get in the bed. That's how you handle that. The hell is this? Did you owe my back? Oh, my back. Well, you can just lay on your stomach. Then you'll be all right. <laughs> the hell is this? Anybody got time for that? Yeah, then, then, then the sister get mad because some other woman caught his, her husband's attention. And then we get the phone calls and the emails. My husband ain't right. Well, why ain't he right? He looking at, here we go. He looking at porn. And here's my, my here will go my wife. Uh, sister, so-and-so said, oh, husband's looking at porn. She on the phone with it. Here she go. Sister, she put on mute. Sister, so-and-so's husband looking at porn. What should I tell her? I said, hey, tell her to go to Victoria's Secrets, put on some edible panties, and swing from the chandeliers and work it like her mama showed how to work out there. Bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> and you ain't ever got to worry about this dude watching porn no more. Because I know what's going on. I tell her why. I know what's going on. Here y'all get all comfortable and you don't want to do nothing no more. What you used to do to get the man, you don't want to do it no more. You research sisters know what I'm talking about. I'm going to tell you about a research sister. She going to get with the man. She going to, hey, I'm going to show you something real quick. Look at Hebrews 13, 4 again. I'm going to show you something. Bear with me. Just bear with me. I'm going to try not to sound rude and crass. I'm going to try and sound nice. In fact, I'm going to try and sound edumacated. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Here and, it come. And the bed undefiled. And you know what it means, the bed undefiled? Meaning what you and your spouse is doing? You can do it all night long. It ain't nobody's business. But here come the research, sister. You know, I've been doing research, and I shouldn't be giving fellatio. BJ, I know you're young. You don't know what that word means. It's BJ. Just look at a BJ. Urban Dictionary, BJ. What is that? She, gone, she used to give a BJ like nobody's business. She could suck a golf ball out of a truck. Exhaust. Hey, hey. But now she's doing research. And in the research, it says sodomy and she goes oh that's sodomy listen that's not the biblical definition of sodomy the biblical definition of sodomy goes with same sex she doing research so now she don't want to she don't want to she don't want to do that she don't want to help her husband brothers i'm going to help you out here you know what you do bring it out you get you some jelly you put that thing that jelly on see, listen you got you got 10 minutes if you don't do what you used to do, I'm going out this door. I'm telling you, I ain't got time for anybody playing games with these daggone women. The hell is this? Because you know if she went with the white man, he'd have her doing the nastiest thing ever. And she would never tell the white man, I don't do that. White man got his foot on her head. She's vomiting, and he's still knocking her back out. She don't say nothing. But here you go, put some jelly on it. The hell is this? Or syrup, whatever you like. Give me my damn nerves, these research sisters. The Bible says the bed is undefiled. I'm tired of the emails. And listen, listen, here go the sister. After we tear up in the, in the scriptures, she gonna go, well, well, uh, here she go. How my Satan goes, say his balls stink. Oh, his balls stink. These are the 
emails. My wife said, let me see the email. He, he don't wash downstairs, so I don't feel comfortable doing that. Well, take that nigga in the shower and put some soap on it. What the hell is this? Yeah, the royal penis is clean now. Have him take a bath. Put them, put, have the nice hot, to, hey, cause you know, he said, babe, have it ready when I get home. Make sure the bath is there, babe, get in the tub. I'll wash you, I'll do it for you. Blah, blah, blah. Treat the man like a king. Daggone women, get on my nerves. <laughs> Where we at now? I'm sorry if I sounded rude and crass, Bishop. I apologize. Yeah, yeah, Bishop, Bishop, brother said, you're the only one who can get away with that. <laughs> Brother say you the only one can talk like that. You get away with it. Lord have mercy. Well, we trying to talk like that. That's that it. We we just evil. <laughs> so where we at? You we'll go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 First Corinthians and 4. First Corinthians 7. Yes, sir. 4. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 4. The wife have not power of her own body, but the husband. So whatever he wants, sisters, he want. Do that thing. Go ahead. And likewise, also the husband have not power of his own body. But the wife and brothers, it's the same way. You and some of you, bro, some of you brothers, listen. One brother, remember the age, hey, uh, Captain Shema. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Brother, going to talk about she stink down there. Listen, if that's the case, uh, they got medication for that thing down there. He said a bath don't work on her. Her parachute is fumigated. The hell with this. You better help your wife out. Don't talk about her like that. Don't bring that to us telling, her, telling us your wife vagina, her vagina, her stink. That's rude, bro. Take her somewhere to the doctor. I'll ask her, sister, what do you do? Get some real counsel on that. And what the brother, because we might not know. That's woman stuff. Go over there to the senior sister. Have your go over there and talk to them. That's what you got to do, you know? Shoot, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, it could be her diet. She need to stop eating steak seven times a week. In fact, she need to fast a few days. Clean that gut out, you know? Purge that thing. Where we at? Verse 5 now, 1 Corinthians 7, 5? Yes. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Defraud ye not one the other. The Bible says defraud ye not one another. Don't hold back sex. Now, now listen, if she's on her menstrual, everybody understands that for you nasty brothers. If she's on her menstrual, the Bible tells you not to deal with her on her menstrual. For seven days, God says. Go ahead. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be for cons be with consent for a time. Now, except it be with consent, what kind of consent? Read on. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinence. Okay, sister. Now, the sisters online said if the sister washes, takes a bath with apple cider vinegar, her parachute going to be okay. There you go. It might get a little tighter down there. Knowledge. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Sisters, I'm trying not to be rude. You done put out two, three, four kids. Some VJJs don't snap back like that. So when your husband asks you for a little fellatio, because you know the mouth can get tight. She <laughs> That's all a man is asking for. He missed that, that, that tight feeling. I'm sorry. I, I, it just went through my mind. I'm sorry. Because brother complain about this. Yeah, brothers, because sisters, brothers complain. Brothers complain about this thing. And we don't want to see y'all end up in divorce court. We want y'all to be happy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Read again, I didn't hear Yes, you. sir. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer. And See, that's the only time you don't have sex. When you give yourselves to fasting and prayer. That's husband and wife. Not just one of you, but the two of you agree. We have an issue, a family, something's going on in the family. Let's fast. We ain't going to touch each other because that's what God's law is saying here. Go ahead. And come together again. And then you come together again sexually. Why? That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Because if you don't come again sexually together, Satan's going to tempt one of y'all. Whether it's the male or the female, Satan's going to so say, she looking at another man. 
He looking at another woman. Why? Because you ain't give him, her none and she ain't give you none. Y'all mad with each other. Y'all don't want to have sex. Now somebody's going to be on Backpage.com looking on uh, matchmakers and all of that. What's that little website? Uh, uh, Tinder? Tinder and all that foolishness. Like they, they, they uh, what's that movie? Uh, Slim and Slim, Queen and Slim. They, they met each other on Tinder, right? Yeah, it's a Tinder. What's, here she go, what's that? She Googling things now. That's what happens when you, when you play that sex game. I'm going to hold back from you. Then when them eyes start wa wandering, now you mad. Go ahead. Verse 6. But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. You know when he says this part here, but I speak this by permission and not of commandment, meaning there's no commandment you could go back in the Old Testament to reference what Paul is talking about. So the Lord gave him permission to explain and discuss certain things, what we're talking about now. Go ahead. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as myself. What does that mean? That goes back to verse 32. Read verse 32. Yes, sir. Verse 32. But I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried, carry for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. Paul was single, okay, because he chose to be single to dedicate his life to the Most High's work. Go back. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man have his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows. The unmarried and to the widows. Paul's, the widows are those women whose husbands died. Go ahead. It is good for them if they abide even as I. So Paul said it's good if you, if you remain single just like me. Give yourself, dedicate yourself to the one true God. That's what Paul is saying. Go ahead. But if they cannot contain. Uh-oh, if you cannot contain sexually. Let them marry. Let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. For it is better to marry than to burn sexually. That's what he's saying. But now, you know what people have done in the truth? They have read that and they have, this, some sisters have just ran on that side of the room and grabbed any old brother she saw because she wanted any old kind of dang-a-lang, dang-a-lang. But guess what, sister? You forgot. Paul is not saying to skip the steps to marriage. He's just saying it's better to marry than to burn. One of the steps is Sirach 6 and 7. Get me that. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 7. So while you're burning sexually, because you just got to have it, she just got to have it, you still need to apply this. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. You still got to prove him, sister. You brothers, you might be burning sexually. You still got to prove her. You can't skip over that and get over any old woman you see. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Read. Was that it? No, sir. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. For and don't be hasty to credit. Because you know people, know, he's, women go, oh, he's good. He's all right. Sisters too. So brothers go, she's good. She's, mm-mm. Y'all -mm. been talking for three weeks. That is not enough time to get to know one another. In fact, six months really is not enough time. If you ask me, my advice, year, two years. Then you get to know one another. Then you start to know each other's personality, character flaws, and all that. You say, okay, I see now. You get to know one another. Then you got to decide, am I able to put up with this person's personality traits and character flaws? If y'all talk about it, can you, let's improve this about one another. I want you to do this. Can you do that for me? Okay, and that's how you get to know one another, improve one another. And they start to change and transform and upgrade to that spirit you want them to be at. Look at 1 John 4 and 1. <clears throat> the book of 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. So you see that, beloved, believe not every spirit. Now, although this is going into uh, people that claim to know the scriptures, it's also a principle for proving anybody. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Sister, brothers will tell you they are of God. They will tell you that they love the Lord, and likewise, vice versa, brothers. These women over here will tell you they love the Lord. It says, uh, try the spirits. 
To try the spirits is the same thing that says prove a friend. It's saying the same thing. Try a friend, prove a spirit. Prove them whether they love the Lord. You got to observe them. Talk to them. Get to know them. That's how you try. That's how you prove. Read that again. Yes, sir. Uh, 1 John 4 and 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try Why? the spirit. Because people lie. Brothers lie. Sisters lie. Read it again. Yes, sir. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are going out into the world. Give me 1 Corinthians 6, 15. I'm going sh to show you something. When you're burning, when Paul said it's better to marry than to burn, you decide you don't want to go through the proving process of trying the spirit. This is what happens. 1 Corinthians 6, 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. It is forbidden for us to deal with harlots, brothers. A harlot is any old woman. Or you, you don't got you might not have to pay her. How much is how much is it for uh, How much is it? $40? It's a roundaway brother over there. $40 for a uh, or whatever some whatever kind of job you getting, you know what I'm talking about, sex. Some of these hoes, harlots, harlots, will be satisfied with a happy meal. That's all you got to give a happy meal. She'll make you smile. Read that again. <clears throat> First Corinthians 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. God forbid means no. You're not some brothers don't deal with harlots. And a harlot don't have to be. Well, she wasn't standing on the corner uh, selling herself. She ain't a harlot. Y'all know them holes in the projects. Right. Some of them don't even live in the projects. They just around the around the corner. Some of them, you know where they at? Just taking the McDonald's. They they will they will. Yeah, read on. <laughs> Verse sixteen. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh. That's why it's forbidden for us to join. That, that's how you know sex is spiritual. It says what? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh, meaning one spirit. They all come together. She takes, she takes, your DNA goes and gets absorbed in her and vice versa. Sex is spiritual. I know it's deep right there, but it's real. Go ahead. Verse 17. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Watch what it calls it now. Read. Flee fornication. The Bible is calling sex with a harlot fornication. That's another form of fornication. Stay off Backpage.com. Stay off, what is it, Tinder? Stay off Tinder uh, and those type of things. Because you're going to get a harlot. You're not going to get a God-fearing woman. Okay? From there, give me Sirach 23.17. Book of Sirach, chapter 23, verse 17. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. He will not leave off till he dies. So brothers who have that whoremonger spirit, there's no one woman that can satisfy him. The Bible says the only thing that can stop a whoremonger brother is death. So sisters, you see this brother, you know through talking to him, he had woman after woman after woman after woman. Now he's been in six months, maybe a year. And you think you could tame that spirit. And you decide you don't want to wait two years for proving. No. You just ruined your life. Yeah, I can fix You misses fix it. I'm the quicker fixer upper. Mm -mm. You got a red cape coming out of that. That's, that's not a cape. That's a parachute hanging. <laughs> you can't trip tame that dude. That dude's a whoremonger brother. Not only when you meet him, you find out he's a whoremonger. He got kids across the country he ain't taken care of. And you want to marry him. Our suggestion, our advice, you better worry, wait two years and prove this guy. To see if he's truly changed, if he's truly transformed in a renewing of his mind. But if you decide not to take our counsel, okay. Deuteronomy 23, 17. <clears throat> 
Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. That's what you want right there. That part right there. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel. So likewise, brothers, some of these sisters, they come in live, having lived the life of a whore. Meaning she's a round-the-way girl. She's that ratchet sister. Now, there's an expression, you can't change a hoe into a housewife, but God can. The Lord can. If she's truly changed, you got to observe, talk to her, get to know her, listen to her, see if she lied. I'm going to give you a lie right now, what a sister done said to her brother. Sister used to be a hoe. She used to dance in a strip club. I said, brother, my advice to you is, she, I, no, I said to him, she's not for you. He says, no, she's for me. I said, you're a virgin? He said, yeah, I'm a virgin. I said, you never had sex before? She said, he said, I never had sex before. I said, she's not for you. Why do you say that? I think she's for me. I said, how old are you? She said, he said, I'm 21. I said, how old is she? She's 35. I said, she's not for you. No, Bishop, you don't know what you're talking about. She's for me. Little did I know that back at the ranch, they was doing a, uh, what's that thing when you talk to each other? Phone sex. Yeah, on, on FaceTime. And she opened her parachute. And his head went to the screen like that. <laughs> He'd never seen it before. He, he, no, he was only on the screen. If he could have fallen, he would have. Spiritually, he fell in. I said, bruh, she's not changed. She's not. I said, she showed you. Uh, I said, she showed you what? She showed me her thing. Her thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that thing down there. I said, she's not for you. She for me. I said, let me tell you, bruh. Ask her her life. Just ask her her past without me having to tell you. So he going to go ask her her life. I don't know what Bishop talking about. He need to mind his business. I said, ask her if she ever worked in a, in a club. He gonna, he, he gonna, his little self going to go over there. He used to work in a club. Oh, here he go. Here he go. Yeah, I used to work in a club, but I wore jeans in the club. I worked in a strict club, but I wore jeans in the club. And I just handed out the drinks. He going to come back. Bishop, you don't know what you're talking about. She wore jeans in the strip club. I said, you ever been to a strip club? No. I said, shut the hell up. <laughs> no woman goes in there wearing jeans in a strip club. The hell you talking about? I said, I said bro, let me ask. Here's another question. I'm not trying to get in your business. But this sister been around. She's seen all kind of dang a lang dang a -langs. She's seen little ones, big ones, curved ones, ones that go backwards and forth. All kinds, she's seen it. I said, I just got one question. You, if you're not blessed, she not for you. He go to brother, he go. Well, I think I'm all right. Uh, I said, if you got to ask or think you think you're, I said, you're not blessed. Stop. She's not for you. Here he going to tell her. Uh, he said, Bishop said, if, if I'm not blessed. Well, you, you, I really shouldn't be with you. She gonna say, listen, size don't matter to me. I said, stop. This is a round the way girl right there. She's seen all kinds. All kind of prints she's seen. She worked in the champagne room. And there is sex in the champagne room. I said, little brother, sit your behind down. You ain't, you, I said, I'm not, I'm not blessing this marriage. I'm gonna make sure none of the deacons bless this marriage. You trying to destroy my life. I said, you, you got that right. I'm all, you know why? His mama came to me and said, watch out for my son. Please don't make him, let him make a mistake. So I made sure I watched out for that boy. And I told his mother, I said, I'm going to watch out for him. That's, that's what I did. He, he hated me for months. He couldn't stand my guts. If he could have stabbed me, he would have stabbed me right there. He said, no, nah, they're going to beat me down if I stab him. <laughs> I had to look out. I said, marry that sister right over there. I said, we went trusted. That's the sister right there. He married his sister. She a virgin. He a virgin. I said, y'all work well together. You simple. She simple too. Y'all be all right together. Y'all going to be good. Y'all could grow. Y'all could grow. And they doing good today. All praise to the Lord. All praise. All praise. All praise. <laughs> you, know, you know something, Bishop? All, all your camp leaders got to understand something. Your job is to look out for the young brothers. Because a lot of them, they have no common sense. Believe it or not, they have no common sense. Like the young men, then they're 21, 22, 23. Listen, look up for them. They're going to come and they'll be like, hey, yo, why are you talking to that sister? 
You guess what? You the father. You supposed to say, hey, what what, what you talking to your sister about? You don't listen. You should not care if they get mad. Listen, I don't care if you get mad or not. How I want you get mad, but you don't coming that you didn't you didn't commit that mistake. Get mad, I don't care. You be all right. You be all right. Get mad, whatever you want. Like you know, little Issa here. We got looking for little Issa right here. You know what I'm we ain't gonna let little Issa make the same mis make mistake. We're gonna like, hey, little Issa, do this, do that. We're gonna keep our eyes on him, and we're gonna make sure he don't commit to no uh 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 them champagne wound. <laughs> now we're gonna check out a clip. I think now now, now I don't follow uh, basketball. Some of the brothers, I don't get a lot of basketball, but I saw this video. This video right here, this thing gonna strike home. When you get with the wrong type of woman, I've been telling you brothers who got property, some of you brothers, you are doing okay for yourselves. Some of you are uh, in your early or late 20s, early 30s, 40s, you have acquired stuff, properties, things like that. Let's play this video. What's his name? Steven Jackson. Play this video. Now, this video is kind of long, so we might interrupt all the way through, but it's a very good video. And I'm not saying he's a righteous brother. Now, some brothers have met him. Some brothers have met him, gave him flies and all that. But what he says, you can glean some nuggets out of what he's saying. Play this. And my ups and downs with the youth so they won't make these same mistakes. Once again, this is not to demean anyone. This story is not to demean anyone, right? It's just the truth. It's facts. It ain't no made up shit. Everything I'm talking, everything I'm finna tell y'all is all facts. I'm trying to get this light out back of my head. We go. All right. Let me say this one more time for all you motherfuckers who want to say what you want to say and don't want to hear what I said. Pause it. Hear what I said. Okay, disclaim because I know I'm gonna get an email. He was cursing. You know when people get on my nerves when they say that? Like when they in their house, they don't curse. Let me and some of the most Christianized people is the biggest cusses. You ever see what's that gospel singer named Shirley Caesar? Get her mess. Watch how what she say to you. Be all kind of words, but the child of God. T D Jakes too, all of them. They all curse and he did and their people in their congregation come. He cursed. Like when you walk outside these doors, people ain't dropping f bombs left and right. But this is how the brother talk, and he's yeah, he's smoking weed, but that ain't the point of the video. Go on back now, watch, play the video. Try Take to your bag, what I out say. The room. This is not to demean anyone. This is not to demean anyone. These are facts. These are my life experiences. This is stuff that I've experienced, that I've learned from, that I want to share with youngsters so they won't make the same mistakes I've made. Is that clear? To all you blogs that's going to try to take what I say and put it on your blog and try to make a story that nobody ain't going to see anyway because you only got 660,000 followers, I'm not going to be the guy that go on your blog Cause you twisted something I said and, and 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 speak on it to make your blog get attention. Nah, I ain't that stupid, fam. I'm on Showtime. I'm on Fox. Okay, your blog because you twist the words and made up shit. No, if anybody got a, everybody got a blog. So ninety percent of the blog shit is false. All right. So don't pay attention to no blogs. Y'all know I'm a real one. So y'all can come right here to my page and I'm gonna give it to y'all real. I ain't never lied about nothing and ain't no reason to lie now, right? All right. So I'm giving game to the young man out here and tell him the experience I've had. This is not to demean nobody once again, okay? This is free game. Shout out to everybody. I love everybody. I love being black first. You know what I'm saying? And I love everybody that's black, women included. Let me get that clear because a lot of y'all just ignorant. But let me say this too. A hit dog will holler. A hit dog will holler. You Pause. ain't got to say no name. That means if you're guilty, you're going to get mad. Only the guilty ones get mad at stuff. Go ahead. You ain't got to point no fingers. You ain't got to do nothing. A hit dog will holler, bro. This is facts. All right. So. And I hope even women. I hope some women... Hear this and be like, you know what? I'm gonna find me a one man. 
I hope this is for women and men, but I want my young men to take heed to this and take listen to this and take the right advice from this. Okay. Yeah, the story is a little funny too, but take the right advice from this. And and the moral of this story is find you one woman. This is the whole reason for this for me telling the story. Find you one woman, love her through the good and bad, and build with her. Because I'm telling you, if you think having a whole bunch of hoes and having multiple kids by women is something to brag about, it's the, it, it will ruin your life. Thank God it didn't ruin mine, but it will, it, will, it will add a lot of stress to your life that you don't need, bro. Facts, all right? All right, so bam. So I'm, I'm, with, I'm, I'm with a chick at the time. I'm with a chick at the time, right? And uh, me and her together. Uh, we've been together for like a year or two. Um, I met her in New York uh, in the subway. I was driving. I was my first year in NBA. I met her in New York, and um, I flagged her down while she was driving. Got her number. Da da da. End up talking to her. We end up dating um, for a year or two. Uh, I go to San Antonio. Right? She's with me in San Antonio. So y'all know I won a championship. So when it was time for me to go negotiate my contract the following year, the team told me, what's the number? It's, we want you here, Jack. It's a number of reasons why you're all here. And this is my first time ever hearing something like this. So one of the reasons why San Antonio didn't want to sign me back was because of the girl I was dating at the time. Said she was a bad influence to some of the other wives that didn't like how she dressed. Wait, and stop. San Antonio was a Did y'all hear this? This is a messed up. This is what we was reading about earlier. When you get a wife and you when you hear her name pop up and you sigh bitterly, this is what was going on. Because his wife was obviously nobody liked her. She couldn't get along with nobody. She didn't know how to dress. Not even his wife, but it was his girlfriend at the time. Go on. Go ahead. It wasn't that type of organization, but how can you tell somebody how to dress? You know what I'm saying? This was my woman, so I didn't really care about it at the time. I didn't really pay him no attention. Cool, I bounced. You know what I'm saying? Y'all should be worried about my basketball, not who I'm dating, right? So that was that's that's one reason why I didn't sign back after we won the championship in San Antonio, right? Was because of the woman I was with, right? Bam. So some of you is not gonna get now. some of you is not gonna get wink because of your wife. Atlanta, me and her fight in Atlanta. We about, we have a rocky relationship in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? But I, we, you know we we working shit out, you know. No no relationship is perfect. Come to Atlanta, I signed with Indiana the next year, and I signed my big contract in Indiana, right? I signed my big contract in Indiana. Before I get my big contract, we still together. We together, we living together and all that, right? So we moved to Indiana. I play a season in Indiana. I proposed to her. I can't remember why I proposed to her. None of that matters anyway, though. But I proposed to her, and during that time, you know, we plan to get married in Houston. We plan to get married in Houston, right? So news flash for all 530 y'all on here. In order for a prenup to get drawn up, the 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 two people, the man and the, the husband and the wife have to agree on what the and what on what the prenup says in order for the prenup to come out valid and you both sign it. Let me say that again. In order for a prenup to get drawn up, both sides have to agree. The, the, the husband and the wife, the bride and the groom, they both have to agree on the prenup before it's written up, before it, before it can even get written up. You have to agree on it, right? So, I take care of a lot of people. I'm never letting one woman control of all the hard work I've done in my life. None of these motherfuckers was in the gym with me, right? So Wait, but, wait, do y'all hear what he just said? I never let a woman take control of me. He said, none of these women was in a gym with me while I was working. Give me that scripture real quick about the preeminence in Sirach. What he's saying is so true. What he's saying is so, you work, you, you, whatever your gift, your skills, brother, the woman comes, not all sisters, I'm not making a blanket statement, but if you get that slug sister, you know what a slug is, that bum bee who come and want to take what you built all your life, Read that. Read that. Read that. Come on. Get live. Sirach chapter 33, verse 18. Sirach 33, verse 18. Here's the point. What he's saying. Hear me, O ye great men of the people, and hearken, hearken with your ears, ye rulers of the congregation. 
Give not thy son and wife, thy brother and friend, power over thee while thou livest. You see that? Give not, I can't quote, give not thy what? Thy son. Son. And wife. And the part we want to look at is wife. Don't give your wife what? Thy brother and friend power over thee while thou livest. Don't give no woman power over you while you live, brothers. You some, like he's a ball player. He's in a gym from sunup to sundown, practice, practice, practice. And here come Miss Johnny come lately. Now she want to get in on it. Mm-mm. He, he, that's why he said, I ain't seen none of these women in the gym with me. Y'all better keep this in mind. Was that a Gedaliah? Verse 22 now. Go ahead. In all thy works, keep to thyself. The preeminence. Keep to yourself the preeminence. This is for you've been working hard. You single, you building your paper, you building your credit, you doing all that you got to do. Mm. Go ahead. Leave not a stain in thine honor. Now listen, I'm not making reference to you ain't got nothing and she ain't got nothing. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about you got something already. Now here she come. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, now, guess what? Even if you ain't got nothing, still keep to yourself the preeminence. Right, right, right. And let, me, let, me, so let me put it out like that. And because here you go, you ain't got nothing, she ain't got nothing. You're building stuff. You work, she work. You make the mistake, let's get a joint bank account together. Together? Together. Now all your money ain't going in this joint bank account and all, all her money going there. Now she getting mad at you. And she says, you know what? I'm going to take all the money out the bank out with a press of a button. Boom! She got all your money and she skipped town. It has happened at least off the top of my head three times. Three times. You made the mistake of putting all your money in an account with her. The second she got in the argument, you got, she got mad at you and she's talking to some other homeboy, she skipped town and take everything you built for. One sister took, how much she took? 32000 32 grand. And the brother was crying. Well, I said, you simple. We said, you simple as hell. We told you to get your money out of that account. You don't listen. But you was in so much in love. L-U-B. Love. You be, if you get a joint account, just let it be for bills. Put X amount of money in. This is for bills. And you make sure you got your own stash. And if she got her own stash, that's fine, babe. I don't want your money. You make your money. And if she ain't working, then you give her his your allowance. Glean off that. Okay, that's how you do it. Keep to yourself the preeminence, though. Back to the video. Did we finish get a liar? Okay, babe, back to the video. So whoever I'm married to, they signing the prenup off top. I'm not, it's not even a second guess. So me and I had to talk about it. So it's we get the prenup back at least three, four months before the wedding, right? About four months, maybe at least at least three to four months before the wedding. This is all true, y'all. So, four months, three, four months, when we get the P and I give it to her. I hope Grant, none of you brothers are still getting spirits so y'all cause it a weed. Oh, I sure do miss that. Hey, put, put it back a, a few seconds. Put it back a few seconds. Go ahead. So, four months, three, four months, when we get the P and I give it to her. Granted, when I give it to her, she shouldn't be surprised by it because me and her sat down and agreed up on the prenup, right? Me and her agreed up on the prenup. We agreed. Listen to me, y'all. We agreed on the prenup. Bam. So we agree on it. A month passed, like two months for the wedding. I'm like, yo, look. We need to get that prenup signed so we can go ahead and, you know, send it in and get it, get it, you know, get all that taken care of. So when we get down there to Houston, we ain't got to worry about it. I tell her that like two or three times. It's a month. It was, that was two months before the wedding. It's a month before the wedding. Look, bro. I just, we, this is, this is something we agreed on. We shouldn't be, I shouldn't have to keep coming and tell you to sign this prenup, Right. What's up, Bird? I shouldn't have to, Bird, you know about this. I shouldn't have to tell you to sign this prenup, right? This is what I'm telling her. This, for, after the first time I came to, it was two months before the wedding. Now it's a month before the wedding. I'm like, man, I've been asking you about this prenup. 
There's no way I should have to keep coming to you about this prenup knowing we had to agree on this before they even drew it up. So why do I have to keep coming to you about it, about getting this, getting this signed? She's like, I'm going to sign it. 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 I'm like, cool. You can sign it. But look, during that time, we making arrangements for the wedding, right? Because, you know, you still got to plan shit. So, you know, I love her. And I'm going to keep it real with you. I was in love with her. You know what I'm saying? I was in love with her. And we was building a family. So I'm like, okay, cool. I ain't going to make no big deal. I, 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 I went with planning a wedding. I didn't stop. I kept planning a wedding. I told her several times, dog, about the prenup and asking about it. So, bam. So, as we, this, 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 this is one of the twists of the wedding, right? So, as we planned for the wedding, I'm from Texas, right? She from New York. I'm from Texas. I'm from Port Arthur, which is an hour from Houston where we get married, right? I want my pastor to do it. He right there. It'll save us some money. Da, 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 da. She is adamant about this certain pastor doing the thing, right? So I'm like, cool, it's, it's, it's her wedding. I ain't got no problem. Keep in mind, remember this pastor, right? Remember this pastor. This is a pastor. She 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 was, I'm talking about screaming at me and everything. No, my he had this pastor has to do it. This pastor has, I'm like, well, this we can save money and make more sense. This is my pastor since I was a kid. You don't even know this guy. Some other girl brought this pastor to her attention. Some other girl Brought the pastor name to her attention. She, this ain't this a pastor she's never seen. Pause. Don't even know. Y'all know these pastors charge to do a wedding, to officiate a wedding. We don't charge. So these pastors make everything a hustle, a money hustle. Go ahead, back to the video. But she don't want my pastor to do it, right? Cool. Remember that. So I'm like, fine. Fine. No problem. No problem. He can do it. Your pastor can do it. I'm cool with it. I ain't going to be petty. Cool. I want you to have This is your day. Everything is yours. I spent about 400000 on the wedding, y'all. About four hundred k, right? It's yours. Whatever you want to do. Hey, pastor don't matter to me. I just want to marry you. I don't even give a damn. Hey, pause right there. Brothers, y'all know men don't give a damn about a wedding ceremony. It's, it's the women. That's their day. They want to be seen. This is my day. It's about me. Look at me. That's women. Brothers don't give a dag on about that crap. I tell, well, hey, when I got married, my father-in-law, he it ain't no 400K. The wedding we had was like 30K. But I said to the man, I said, I said, sir, I said, I'm struggling. Your daughter's struggling. How about you use that 30K and put down on a house for us? He gonna look at me, little nigga, you don't tell me what to do with my mouth, honey. I do what I wanna do. I wanna invite my friends. I said, I'm just saying, all right, all right, I left it alone, I left it alone. <laughs> Go ahead, back to the video. Two weeks before the wedding. We going to Houston a week before the wedding. Now we had two weeks before the wedding. Everything planned, we ready to go. I'm like, look, bro. Why I got to keep asking you about this prenup, bro? It ain't like you don't know what's on it. Like, what motives? This is what I told her. What you up to? What motives you on? I ain't on nothing. I just ain't had time to sign up, planning a wedding. All. So I'm like, man, listen, man. All you got to do is sign it. You ain't gotta, it ain't like you got to read it all over again. You know what's in it, duh, duh, duh. I'm going to sign it. I'm going to sign it. Me, being a, being a person I am, I know it's a wedding. And all that shit, I'm like, you know what? I know you probably just frustrated. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a, 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 a supportive man at the time. I know you're going through a lot, baby. I know it's up. You know what I mean? Just when we get, just make sure I get it for the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Da 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 da. <laughs> we go to Houston. We get there, right? We get to Houston. The night I get to Houston, you know, I, I, I she, we, when we get to Houston, we separate. So she go with her friends. I go with my guys. You know, I'm at home. This is my hometown. So, you know, I'm strip clubbing and all kind of shit. Wilding out with the homies. My partner Weezy on here. He was there. Wilding out with the homies and shit, having a good time. So my homegirl Mimi, Mama, Miss Doris, was our nanny at the time, right? We had a nanny at the time. We had a baby. We had a nanny at the time. We had, we had, uh, we had our, my oldest daughter and my son was, I think my son was on the way. And, uh, 
So we had a nanny at the time. And uh, Miss Doris came to my room. I'm like, Miss Doris, real Jay Sims, what's up, my boy? I'm like, Miss Doris, you know, it's wedding in two days. I ain't got no prenup. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm telling you, Miss Doris, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. No, no, baby, don't. You know, you know, I'm all, I'm with you. You know, I'm with you. I know you're right, but don't start having that attitude. It's going to get done. Da, 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 da. Don't worry about it. It's going to get done. It's going to get done. So I'm like, all right, Miss Doris, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be optimistic, you know what I'm saying? But I'm, you know, I'm having a good time, da, da, da. I'm like, am I having a, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, listen, man, I ain't getting married without no prenup. Fuck out of here, not five. You know, that's what I'm thinking the whole time. I'm like, man, I can't believe this motherfucking girl done wait, wait until I spent all this money, got all the way down here, so bam. Miss Doris come to me uh, saying, don't worry about it, it's gonna get done, I'm gonna go get her to sign it, da, 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 right? So, my nigga, this the day of the wedding. Hold on, let me fire my shit back up. <laughs> Y'all ready for the good part? So, so the day of the wedding, y'all. I got Stephon Barberry, I got Mike Bibby. But I can't remember who who was all in, in the wedding at the time, dog. I had everybody. I know I probably Bun was there. I had a lot of my homeboys. In, I'm talking about all my homeboys, dog. I can't remember who was all in the wedding at the time. But Mike Brown, celebrities, everybody, the her friends, everybody, right? So we wake up that morning. We I'm getting dressed. I'm getting dressed. You know what I'm saying? We all getting dressed for the wedding. Da, 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 everybody getting, you know what I'm saying? All my grooms when we in the little grooms room, we all get dressed. In the back of my mind, you know what I'm saying? I'm all thinking about this damn prenup, right? That's all I'm thinking about. So my nanny comes in the room. She's like, how you doing, baby? Good morning. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, hey, good morning. Da, 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 da. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's up with the prenup? She like, uh, I talked to her. She said she's going to sign it. I'm, I'm, I'm finna go get it right now. I just wanted to come check with you to see how you doing this morning. Make sure you all right. Make sure you wasn't stressing about it. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Nah, you say she gonna you know you say she gonna sign it? I'm cool with it. Getting dressed, me and my boys drinking, smoking, all that, getting dressed, having a good time, da da da, whatever we doing for the wedding. So after we get dressed, where we staying at at the hotel, where we staying at is a big ballroom where we was having a wedding, right? So we had to walk. We had to uh, go get on this private elevator. Me and all my, all my groomsmen, we get on the private elevator and we go to a little back room where from the back room, we just walk out into the wedding, right? So when we get to that, when we get to that room, that's when I, once we get in that room, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, hold up. You know what I'm saying? This one, not really turn up. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, hold up, hold up, man, hold up, hold up. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, and then this, this, this one, Steph, this why, this why Steph Marbury and Mike Bibby, my brothers, all right, for life. Steph Bibby, Steph uh, Marbury and Mike Bibby are my real brothers, like my real brothers. You see what I'm saying? No bullshit. These are my real brothers. So we in the back, we walk to the back room, and the motherfucking um, the uh, the priest come in, the preacher come in with his, with his with his uh, other with his assistant, I guess, and then. My nanny come back in there with a with a with a, like a with a spook look on her face, like she still like she she pulled me to the side and she like she still ain't signed it. So when I said that, I'm like, well, shit, I ain't getting married then. She was like, ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho. And so look, so the preacher, remember the preacher, y'all, remember the preacher. When I say when I say, oh, I ain't no, nah, I ain't getting married. Steph was like, she ain't signed a prenup. What the fuck? What are we even here for? I'm like, yeah, dog, I ain't doing it. The preacher steps up. He's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The preacher says, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I look at him like, he said, this is what he said. He said, now, now hold on. Don't now I know you love this girl. Don't make a drastic decision. I think you should just let God handle it. I say, huh? I think you should just let God handle it. Me, as a as a pastor, I don't believe in prenups. Nah, I know why she was fighting for you. You don't believe in prenups. Nah, it all makes sense. 
I ain't getting married. Damn what you believe in. I put everything in God's hand. And God is telling me to put the pen in her hand and make her sign this goddamn freedom before I get married. That's what God telling me. So God telling me and you two different things, partner. As that's going on, Steph Marbury grows crazy. Hell no. Nah. Nope, we ain't doing it. Hell, no, it ain't going on. Steph go crazy. Mike Bibby walks. Are you serious, Steve? Fuck out of here. Everybody, no, 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 no. Bruh, this preacher has the nerves to sit there for about five or ten minutes and try to convince me that God told him that, that he don't believe in prenups, so I shouldn't believe in him. Listen, bro, we ain't in the same tax bracket, first of all. You know what I'm saying? Bam. So now, now y'all see why she wanted that preacher so bad that she didn't even know. Bam. So bam. The dog, God take all my blessings if I'm lying, dog. This is a true story. I, it's too many people that was there to vouch for it. So bam. So listen. I'm going to tell y'all this. So I, I found out this after the wedding. You know what I'm saying? But on the way to the wedding, rest in peace, my grandma, my grandma dead now. But on the way to the wedding, my grandmother, this is before all this, everything I told y'all. My grandmother told my mama, Jude, it ain't going to be no wedding. This is before all this. My grandmother told this to my mama on the way to Houston to the wedding, right? So, bam. I'm telling him, look, bro, hell no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Hell no, nah, I'm not going to do it. By that time, it had, it had got rowdy in the bridesmaids room because my sister was in the wedding. You know what I'm saying? Because the wedding, the wedding had supposed to have been started. Bobby Valentino standing up there at the microphone ready to start singing. Ask Bobby Valentino. He was there. Bobby Valentino will tell you this whole story. He was right there. He's standing up there ready to sing, bro. Ready to start singing. So everybody getting ass like the fuck. My mama said my grandmother just sitting there like she already know what's going on. So, uh... It get, it, it get to getting a little ass over there. So my sister ended up coming out of there and say, I had to get out of there before I whip one of them hoes because they end up talking crazy. Something like that. Not those exact words, but my sister was, was upset with what was said and that's so she had to walk out. So, bam. This is when the, this, uh, this is when, this is when she showed her true colors, bro. This is when she showed her true colors. So, wedding off. Yes. Wedding's off. We not doing it. Walk back up to the room. Walk back up to the stairs. Get room. We take, we get an undressed shit. Steph, Steph Marbury's like, bruh. Hold on. First of all, I'm lying. We get back to the room. We get back to the room, right? Y'all know I'm going to always be 1,000 with everybody. All, 1, 000, all, I'm going to tell y'all the honest truth every time. When we first get back to the room, after I called it off, when everybody's trying to figure out what's going on, we all get back to my room. I break down crying, dog. Honest to God truth. I can't lie. Because I was hurt. Because I was ready to, I wanted to marry her, bro. This is the honest to God truth. I break down crying, dog, for about a good 20, 30 minutes. I break, I'm talking about I'm hard down crying, dog. I'm hard down crying because I'm hurt, dog. Like, I'm really hurt. I didn't think a woman would take me to this point over a piece of paper and not marry me, especially after we got a child and we trying to build some shit. Like, I was honestly hurt. You know what I'm saying? I was hurt. I was in a hard down crying, dog. And this is why I love, this is why I, I fell in love with Mike Baby Mama. And this is why I always treat her like my own mama. I'm sitting there crying. I hear Steph in the background talking, man, fuck that shit. We finna turn up. Fuck that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that. Fuck that. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying I'm talking about snot, everything. I'm hard down crying like I lost, like I lost my, I don't know, bro. I'm hard down crying as a grown man. I ain't never cried like that, right? So as I'm crying, Mike Bibby Mom's Mike Bibby Mom walk up to me, dog, and it's bringing tears to my eyes today. She walk up to me. She grab her bare hand. Mike Bibby's mom wipe the snot and all this from my face, everything from my face, and she picked my chin up and she said, "You became a man today, nigga." <laughs> nigga, I'm getting chills. She wiped snot from my my nose and wiped wiped my eyes, my nigga, and said, and picked my chin up and say, 
You became a man today. So, with all that going on, this ain't even half, though. So, with all that's going on, after she do that, I come out of it. Stuff like, man, you spend all this money. We finna go party. We finna go party. Da, da, da. Let's go downstairs and still have fun. Look, hey, look, my best friend, Roy D, on here. Look, five Roy D. Am I lying, Roy D? Am I, have I told a lie yet, Roy D? He on here, five Roy D. That's my best, my brother. Same tattoos, everything. Listen, so... As I'm wiping my tears and stuff off, you know what I'm saying, getting ready to go downstairs and party, her, uh, uh, somebody from her side comes to my room. This when it get tricky, y'all. Comes to my room and say, hey, Steve, hey, hold on, just calm down. She want to talk to you. She want to talk to you. I said, what she want to talk for? She's like, no, just calm down, man. You, you, you was about to marry her. You know what I'm saying? Just give her, just give her a second. Just out of respect, just, just give, show me a little love and go talk to her, bro. I'm like, fuck it. Everybody in my room be like, man, fuck that. And my line, Scoop J. Scoop J on here right now, too. My cousin. He already know. Everybody know. This is no lie. So look, her uncle coming like, man, come talk to her. Come talk to her. I'm like, all right, I'll go talk to her. So look, I get in the room. She's still in her wedding dress. And she crying and shit, right? So soon as I walk in the room, she hard down crying. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. Da 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 da. I'll sign it. I'm, I'm, whatever, whatever. I'll sign it. I'll sign it. Listen, I was born at night, but not last night. <laughs> One thing I know: anytime somebody signs anything where they crying under any type of stress or any real emotional or something like that, that shit can get thrown out. I was already told that by my folks before I even signed this prenup, before I even got to Houston. So I was already on game. I was already on game. So the shit she tried to, to, to get me in that room and see her tears and think I was going to buckle and just, and, and she could sign it while she crying and all that. Then come back and when they, when I, when they try to stand up, she going to be like, I was emotional at the time. Da, da, and they, I, they, it's, it's been thrown out. It's happened to men before. Five was not falling for that. Nah, sweetheart, you chose yo. You chose the decision you wanted to make, and that's you didn't want to sign it. We on it's fucking over with. Fuck around, it's over with. I stood on that, man. We go downstairs, distress. That's what it's called. Claim under distress. That thanks, Nikki, my sister Nikki. Claim under distress. Anytime, it's, they can throw that shit straight out. So look, bro, that happens. Remember, I told you Steph was turned up. I'm talking about dog. This nigga Steph, my mom, very crazy dog. Soon as we get to downstairs, he already in the DJ booth. Dog, this shit is hilarious. He in the DJ booth. As people walk in, guess what's the first song they play? I want to know if y'all can guess the first song they play, dog. I'll give y'all a second. Let me put this roach out of five for another one. <laughs> Soon as we walk in, Roy D, the first song this nigga play, she gives me money when I'm in need. Yeah, she's a trifling friend indeed. Oh, yeah, she's a gold digger. Way over time, that's good to me. Oh, dog. She, the Kanye bird, she gives me money when I'm in need. I ain't saying she's a gold digger, dog. I'm telling you, dog. That shit was classic, my nigga. Yo, that shit was classic, dog. End up blowing by three hundred, four hundred thousand, and this, and this, and this, and this uh, more crazy shit that happens, dog. You know, I'm gonna keep it all one thousand, child. Nobody never, nobody knows this, but my my partners that was around me. Hey, Rito, this the sickest, this the sickest part of the whole thing right here. After we had party at the hotel, me and all my partners getting ready to go out that night. Two of her main squeezes that was dealt with her was with us that night. 
and I'm going to keep it funky. I downed one of them. You feel me? But that's her friends, though. Yeah, I did it. Sure did. Sure did. Yeah, I did it. Fuck out of here. If I'm going to trick 300, 400,000 off for nothing, yeah, I'm going to get some get back. I'm going to get some get back. Jump down on a clean, too. We pulling off. They outside. Where y'all going? Where y'all going? I look at my partner. I'm like, they couldn't wait. They couldn't wait for the opportunity to jump down. They couldn't wait. They had. They happy the wedding was off. She don't even know it. These are the girls she with the whole weekend that came with all that. Yeah, yeah. That's how the game go though. That's how the game go. True story, dog. True story. No bullshit. And let me tell y'all this too. The same person I'm talking about, we wasn't together. I'm playing for Golden State. We have a, we have kids together, so I want to bring my kids down there at, to Golden State and throw their birthday party down there, right? They did, they lived in uh, somewhere else at the time. You know what I'm saying? Way across the country. I bring them there for the party. Fly them in, pay for the whole party, all that. Bro, I do know this too. Listen, RJ, I fly them. The mama and the kids, they pay for about 3000 for the party. Clowns, animals, all kind of shit, right? While she's there for the party, and she's supposed to be shopping, she left. She went down and filed for child support in California and used my address and said she lived there to get more money. If that what, what what do you call that, dog? What 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 you, what you call that though? Everybody wanna jump on me, but what do you call that? What do you call that? She leave, I get a letter in the mail. She didn't file child support with my address. They don't even live there. <laughs> what do you call that, bro? <laughs> what do you call that? What do you call that? To the point when we do go to court and I do have to pay but the judge tell her, man, listen, I'm looking. You didn't been to four, five states trying to take this man to child support. Man, every state he live in, you try you, enough is enough. <sighs> to my young man, to my young man out here, I don't want you to go through none of that. Why go through that when I can tell you what I've went through and now you can make a better decision because we ain't no different. You know what I'm saying? Me, you, him, her, we ain't no different. We're all human beings. We all have decisions to make. And some of us grow, with, grow up with our father. Some of us don't. So if you like me that don't grow up with your father, a lot of stuff you're going to have to learn on your own from experience. You know what I'm saying? From fucking up. I've done the fucking up, bro. There's no need for you to if I can tell you how to do it. Find you one woman, dog. Love her. You know what I'm saying? Through the good and bad. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying be no fool. And I ain't telling no woman to be no fool. You know what I'm saying? But just make, just take, you know how, you know how niggas make uh, side decisions when they picking their weed or when they picking their clothes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Be more serious about the women you pick like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like for real. Boys take their time and focus on certain shit, jewelry and cars and shit and rims and shit like that. Take that same focus on, on the woman you decide to lay down with or spend your life with, dog. I'm telling you, dog. Especially if, if you plan, if you, if you have dreams or admirations of being successful, dog. You know what I'm saying? You got to find a way to settle down, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, I'm just giving you a game I know, dog. If you think having a lot of hoes and having a different chick in every area code, that shit is played out, my nigga. That shit ain't even safe no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, facts. That shit is not even safe to be thinking that's live. That ain't live, bro. I got bitches here. That, that shit is not live no more, my nigga. I'm just being real. That shit ain't live no more. It's 2020, dog. That shit is not live. That shit is not live, bro. And that's coming from a nigga who stayed in the strip clubs. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and especially, I'm being on some money, especially being black. 
because the 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 stigma of the black man being out the household is so crazy right now. Like we need to start building more black households. You know what I'm saying? Because we at a time now, well, as blacks, we got way more ways to become millionaires now than ever. On God. Let's keep it real. We got more black millionaires now than ever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying that to say, now is the time to start building black families. You know what I'm saying? Now to start to start, start building them legacies. Dog, building our roots back up, dog. You know what I'm saying? They kill black men when we date white women. But as soon as a, a black woman go get a sister, I mean, a black woman go get a white boy quick and they praise her. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really get into none of that, but you know what I'm saying? It, like, we can never get on the same page with women with a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? So I just respect them. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I support them as much as I can. But we kind of, we got to find a way as men to be accountable for our own shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to, we, 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 we got to take, uh, lead. And, 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 and force that, that happy home. We gotta take lead and find that, that sister and build with her. We gotta take lead and, and, and to changing the mode and to showing young men that having a million hoes ain't what's it. Because I'm telling you, if you go from 10 hoes, if you go from 10 girls to one girl, watch how much money you save. Having hoes is not it, bro. That's not it. Find you a woman. Find you one woman, dog. Settle down, build with her. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, that shit saves you a lot of money, dog. Not only do it save you a lot of money, it saves you more peace. And what the the the, the best thing you do? It's the I mean, the best thing yeah. is the right one, thing two, one, to two. do. Hold, hold, hold that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at it, man. This is a man of the world that think like that. You see us in here when we trying to push that. Y'all see something wrong with that? This is a man of the world that we should be ashamed. Some of y'all should be ashamed. And but guess what? This thing here is gonna heal us up. We're gonna be all right. He gave us it was that was good. Thanks for the video, Alicia. We appreciate you. Hey, uh, go to get a lot of get a lot. Give me Ciroc six, eight through twelve, please. Yes, sir. Be very mindful, just like uh, uh I like that song gold. <laughs> Ciroc six and eight. We're gonna read that. Ciroc. Chapter 6 and Start verse 7 again. Start at 7. At verse 7. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Before Bishop with the scripture, by the way, he's only talking about before you get married. He's not talking about after you get married, your father give you something, sister talking about, oh, can you sign this post snap? You lost your damn mind. That's not what he's talking about. I ain't going to marry to no woman, and then we've been together for a year, two years, three years, you go talking about, then you're talking about when your father call you and say, you can have this, I'm talking about, Oh, can you sign this so you won't take my stuff? Get out of here. Yo, you crazy or something? That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about pre up. He's not talking about no damn post up. <laughs> Read that. There is so, a post up though. There is one. Read Sirach, that. Sirach chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. Now, this is the point, right? For some man is a friend for his own occasion. So just like some man is a friend for his own occasion, some women are a friend for their own occasion. What you got? What can I get from you? Go ahead. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And they won't abide in the day of thy trouble. Go ahead. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. That's that friend that goes on Facebook. Rather than talk to you face to face, they'd rather talk to Facebook. And go on Facebook and bring out all your business. Go ahead. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. Yeah, while you eating good, now they're your friend. They're your best friend. Go ahead. And will not continue in the day oh, of that. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bishop, I just turned to cap. She wastes $400,000 when she knew she was not going to sign it. That's some evil thing, bro. Thank you, Deacon Lava. Yes. That thing hurt me. <laughs> that really hurt me. That hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 10. Again, some friend is a friend, um, excuse me, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction, mm -hmm. but in thy prosperity he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy service. So the same way it's talking about men, it goes for women like that too. Go ahead. Verse 12. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee. Right. You, you, all that money you had, now you ain't got it no more. Go ahead. And will hide himself from thy face. And will hide himself from thy face. Now, you did mention uh, 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 
postnuptial. There, there is a, such a thing as a postnuptial. Now, whether somebody's going to sign it or not, that's another story. Okay. Um, put that on the screen because I did look it up. I was very curious. No, it should be there. Okay, this says, this is five signs you need a post nup. Now, again, like Deacon Malachi said, you've been married already. Now somebody want to come in later on with something. Uh, raise it up. Let me see. Raise it up. Mm, raise it up. Uh, okay, start from there. Yes, sir. You need a post nup when... Now, a post nup is after y'all got married already. Okay. Good. One. One or both of you entered the marriage with uh, buku, 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 buku bucks. That means you got, you can, you got a lot of money. Good. Divorce attorneys agree that post-nups are, most, are must-haves for spouses who either enter the marriage with significant premarital assets or expect to inherit significant future assets. Now, this is what Malachi was saying. They enter the marriage, they enter the marriage with significant premarital assets. Assets, meaning you already had that. Let's say you might have forgot to get it. You say, you know what? I should get this done. Raise it. Number two. I want number two now. Number two. You have children from a previous marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, in cases of commingled families, postnups can be predetermined. The share of assets uh, your spouse will receive in the event of a divorce or your death thus ensuring your offspring will receive the inheritance you want them to pocket. In most cases, without a signed post-nuptial agreement spelling out these details, states automatically give the current spouses a share of your estate upon your death. Some state laws dictate division of joint property in cases of divorce as well. Right, so if you got kids and she got kids and you pass away, the money goes to her and she can choose to give the money to her Children opposed to the ones that you bore. That's what that's saying. Go ahead. Number three, you own a profitable business. A post-nup can also protect income or assets you earn during the marriage. This is crucial for spouses who own their own companies. Without a post-nup, an ex-spouse may be entitled to collect a percentage of the business or its earnings. See, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Number four. Number four, you hated the idea of a prenup. Some people believe that negotiating a prenuptial agreement is a pointless and stress-inducing exercise where the very act of contemplating divorce can doom a marriage from the start. Many couples op opt for postnups simply because they don't want awkward discussions about the division of assets before their big happy day. Therefore, these negotiations might proceed more smoothly once the newlyweds have settled down into their marital routine. Yeah, but they both got to agree on that thing. If they both don't agree, then there ain't nothing getting signed. That's the problem with that. Read. Five, you recently received a large inheritance. If one of you unexpectedly receives a sizable bequest or a gift from a family member, you may want to consider a post nup Under normal circumstances, new assets become joint assets. Therefore, a post nup can help keep said assets earmarked just for you in case of a marital split. So that's when you have those thoughts that things are going to go bad. If you, my thing is this. If, you, if your mindset of, is that this is going to fail, why even get married? Don't do it. Okay? I think that was it. Yeah, that was it. Um, what was I going to say about that? Something about you said, Malachi. Oh, 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 post up back on that, because that came up recently. I was talking with the deacons and the captains. Listen, if your wife abandons you and you have both of you, you ain't got nothing, she ain't got nothing, and she abandons you in your poverty, then gets a little something, then says, all right, I just got a house. Maybe I'll come back, but I don't want you to get this house. I want you to sign this. Listen, if you abandon me when I had nothing, chances are you're going to abandon me later on. So me and you can't be together. You've been gone for a year. I don't know nothing about you no more. You abandoned me. It's, mm-mm. We, we getting, this got to end. This is just foolishness. 
I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you decide to get sucked, you simple as hell. Give me 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. If you leave me when I ain't got nothing, chances are you're going to leave me again. 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. Let not the wife depart from her husband. That's what I was talking about. Be mindful. Y'all get with these women and they abandon you. They leave you when you ain't got nothing. Watch the women. Don't get back with them. I don't care. Mm -mm. Lead them them where they at. Look at Judges 19. We're just going to get to the point. We're going to read verse 1 and 2 then jump. This is about the women that like to leave their husband. Okay. Judges chapter 19 and verse 1. One. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem, Judah. And his concubine played the whore against him. She played the whore against him. Go ahead. And went away from him unto her father's house to Bethlehem, Judah. And was there... Four whole months. So she left him. For how long? For four whole months. Go ahead. Verse four. Excuse me, verse three. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her. So he simped. He became a simp. That's what he did. Yeah, he simped. He went talking nice. Come on back, baby. Baby, please. Baby, please. Go ahead. And to bring her again, having his servant with him and a couple of asses. And she brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. Always wanted to meet you. Jump over to verse 22. Y'all can read the whole thing in your own later on. Jump over to 22. Verse 22. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thine house that we may know him. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them. So there's a group of sodomites. Group of sodomites, they wanted to, to rape him. Go ahead. Uh, uh, and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly, seeing that this man is coming to mine house, do not this folly. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, and his concubine. Them I will bring out now, and humble, and humble ye them. And do with them what seemeth good unto you. But unto this man do not so vile a thing. But the men would not hearken to him. So the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. So all these dudes sexually abused this woman all night long. What verse you at? Verse 25. Go ahead. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her Lord was till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was falling down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. You gotta imagine this thing. She dropped dead at the door with her hands on the threshold. Died just like that. Go ahead. Verse 28. And he said unto her, Up. And let us be going. But none answered. Because she was dead. dead. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon, a, upon an ass. And the man rose up and got, him un, and got him unto his place. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine. And divided her together with her bones into twelve pieces. And sent her into all the coasts of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said... There was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. You see that part? Consider it, take advice, and speak your minds. This woman abandoned her husband, left him for how long? Four months. months. Now, how can you really reconcile? You don't know what she's doing, but God brought this judgment. All that whole thing, that whole situation that happened, you got to see the hand of the Lord was behind it. And he brought forth a terrible judgment on her. Hmm. Everybody's like, wow, what's that? Some stuff right there. Go back to 1 Corinthians 7. 
Yes, sir. Um, and read verse 10 again. We're going to read 10 down. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And let not the husband put away his wife. Now let's look at that verse. But, and if she depart. But, and if she depart. Now, it doesn't say why the first one, one of the judges left. But it says he went to speak, what does it say? Friendly. Friendly to her. That, that tells me that he spoke rough to her and she left. In your marriages, you're going to argue. And I'm going to tell you this. If your wife leaves over an argument, she's not marriage material. You made a mistake with that one right there. Okay. We argue, so I'm leaving. Mm -mm. It says, so this part here in verse 11, but and if she depart. Now, you got to ask her, why, what would make, the, now watch this. Jump over to the trouble, verse 28. Well, I'm going to show you something. Because you might think she left for argument there. But look at verse 28. Verse 28. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she have not sinned. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Now that trouble in the flesh deals with arguing, whether it's about money or, or, or sex, whatever. There's arguments. It's going into arguments. So when you get to ver back to verse 11, but and if she depart, we tell you, sisters, the reason for you to depart is you're being physically abused. We can under Everyone can understand that. He's beating the hell out of you. He beat the brakes off you. Get the hell out. He's on drugs. Okay, his mind ain't right. He's schizophrenic. And he kept a secret that he's on medication. Now you find out. He want to kill you. Get the hell out. Everybody understands it. But an argument? No, sis. You, you're getting stupid now. Now, you argue. So you, you, you know how many arguments, arguments you're going to have? In your time to get scripture say that we grow age together. You're going to have many arguments. And if you're going to leave over some BS argument, you, you should have never got married in the first place. You're not ready yet. Right. Okay. One sister, she get to an agreement with her, Lord. She left and went to a hotel room, left that kid with that brother. Yeah. Then she want to justify herself. Or oh, because I was tired, I was, uh, I was mad at him. When you see that type of spirit, that's, that type of behavior, man, that's her behavior. You understand? She once did it before. <laughs> you know, she think coming to Christ, she can roll the same way. If, if, if I don't like something, I'm going really to bail out. Then God have judgment for that too. Right. So read verse 11 again. Yes, sir. Verse 11. First Corinthians 7 and verse 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. But, and if she depart, remain unmarried. Go ahead. Or be reconciled to her husband. Now let's talk about being reconciled. It's very difficult to be re reconciled if the woman has departed and moves to another state. How can you reconcile? Every ape, hey, put the picture on the, uh, of, the, uh, of the ceiling. Put the picture of the ceiling. Come on, Alicia, where you at? Yeah, it's a picture of a ceiling. I sent it to Yosef. He did not send it. Oh, my God. The spirit of Abiel is back. Where's, where's Joseph's? No, that ain't it. Yep, that ain't it. He didn't even post it. Wow, wow. Show me the picture of us. Just Google it then. Yeah. Just put a ceiling. Let me see something. Images. Uh, okay, you can click that one. That's fine. Click that one. Yep, just click it. I'm going to show you something. I'm talking about reconciling. I didn't forget the topic. Can you make it larger? Yeah. Put it on the screen. Every time you try to reconcile with this woman, you call her on FaceTime. This is all you see while she's talking to you. That's, mm, 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 that's some BS right there. Where you at? What you doing? 
This is all you see to make sure that FaceTime is over there on the ceiling. She's back here doing something. God knows what. That's a, you know, reconciling deals with primarily face to face, not face to Facebook or face to FaceTime. Okay. Meaning y'all got to sit down and talk and discuss. What are you going to say, Ariel? Hey, Bishop, also to add to what you said, sir, any brother or sister, if a sister's going through a situation or a brother's going through a situation in their marriage with a significant other, whoever you're counseling with should not give you counsel or say that distance is what's going to fix your situation. Just going right back to what you said, because her counselor told my wife, that yes, it worked. It, I've seen plenty of relationships work out because they're separated from each other. Like basically, she don't have to go back and reconcil uh, reconcil have reconciliation with her Lord. You see that? Bad counsel. Bad counsel. So things that, that marriage right there is already doomed. Already doomed. And guess what? Yes, it's going to be. I'm going to tell you something, sisters. Let me tell you something. With brothers, is different. It will always be different than women. Let me explain something to you, sisters. Brother go through a bad uh, marriage, it don't, whatever it is. So we, he wants to talk to his sister. Uh, sister said, well, has this brother been with any other brother? Yeah, it didn't work out, blah, blah, blah. Women generally understand that. But with brothers, you tell him, well, this sister, she been with that brother over there, it didn't work out. Been with that brother, he, she was with him for a year. Brothers be like, I'm not getting with her. That's the same brother. It's the creepy brothers that'll be, I don't care, I'll get with her. Your old creepy little brothers in here who want seconds. Nobody wants seconds. The hell is this? Uh, then, like, uh, like the captain just said, the whole the whole attention, Bishop, is to gain the wife. Mm -hmm. The wife get the husband. Just like uh, yeah, I pulled that in Matthew eighteen. I say it's the same attention. But if you trying to reason with you inside your house, you have to call somebody else. And tell them your his uh, uh, what happened inside your house. Remember the scripture say one witness. What do you do with one witness? So the other party who's listened to you have not listened to both party. They're showing you Satan already in the mix. That's why they're bugged out. You're bugged out your mind. Satan already there. Because guess what? You calling another sister explain what inside your house. The sister you call and say what's going on in your relationship. He ha she have not called your husband to father uh, wh wh what's the whole thing is about. Yeah. They're the long show you saying he's in the mix. Yeah. It's one side of the story. Exactly. Back to 1 Corinthians 7 and 12 please. Yes sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Read verse 11 again. I'm sorry. Yes sir. 1 Corinthians 7 and 11. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried, or be reconciled to her husband, and let not the husband put away his wife. You see that, Paul, or be reconciled to her husband's sister. You got to understand, you're, you're not to come in this truth with your same thoughtish ways. You leave from one man, you don't like him. You jump to another man, you don't like, now you jump to, that's not going to happen in Israel. You should leave for three years. Let your parachute regather itself. <laughs> Take a deep breath. Come back three years from now because you're not right. You're not marriage material, and we don't want no other brother to get messed up with you. Where we at? Verse 12? Yes, sir. Verse 12. Go ahead. Verse 12. But oh, I forgot. Let not the husband put away his wife. Brothers, you're, you're not to come in as truth and then look for reasons to get rid of your wife. That's another thing. That other also has occurred once or twice. That's against God. Read verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. That means there's no Old Testament law he's basing this on. Read again. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any, if any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. Now, that part right there, I want you to see that part. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. I want you to underline that part. And she be pleased to dwell with him. That's where the confusion always comes in. Because you have some black Hebrew Israelites that say, your wife don't believe she can, she can worship the devil and, or Buddha and it's okay with God. Really, is that what that's talking about? Let's find out. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 6.14. Yes, sir. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Be ye not unequally yoked together with 
unbelievers. The Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with non-believers, unbelievers. Go ahead. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? So the Bible already says, don't get married to unbelievers. So now, that should be the mindset. But now, when we go back to 1 Corinthians, Paul is dealing with a situation. You came into the truth, and you're already married to a, a, this woman. She says, I don't believe in Christ. I don't believe in keeping the commandments. I don't believe that. That's what's happening today. So read that again. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 12. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians 7 verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother hath a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. So let me give you an example. Go to Genesis. Go to Genesis chapter 35. Let's read verse 1 and 2. You're going to find out something about our foremothers. Genesis chapter 35 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared, that appeared unto thee when thou uh, fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Then Jacob said unto his household. Then Jacob said to his household, that includes his wife Rachel and his wife Leah, because he had two. Go ahead. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, mm -hmm. put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments. So what I want you to see, they were worshiping other gods. Mm -hmm. Jacob had to set that house in order. He knew his wives were dealing with idols. Remember they stole, uh, Rachel stole, what's the name? Laban's oh. idols. They, was worship they were idolaters. Jacob was the one that had to set the house in order. Ray, and remember, he loved Rachel, and God killed Rachel. She wasn't right. As pretty as she was, she wasn't right. And the Lord killed her after she had Benjamin. Okay? But the point is, he told them, God was dealing with Jacob. Jacob said, put away those strange gods. Wash and change your clothes. Something like that, he says. Is that what he said? Yes, sir. Change your garments. Change your garments. Yeah, change your clothes. Garments is clothes. The hell is this? So... Now back to 1 Corinthians 7 and 12 again. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him. And she be pleased to dwell with him. Go ahead. Let him not put her away. Let him not put her away. What? So if she's worshiping white Jesus, listen, get that out the house. Get rid of that. Or eating this pork and all that, you got to change that. You got to set things. She, in her mind, you may know she may never really believe. But guess what? She's going to follow what you say because she loves you. Now watch this. I'm going to show you a couple of videos. Give me the video about how to parent. How to parent. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Before you get that, wait a minute. Do I want to read down real quick? Read down real quick. I'm going to show you something. Yes, sir. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not. Here it comes. If he be pleased to dwell with her. If he be pleased to dwell with her. Go ahead. Let her not leave him. Don't leave him. Just the same is vice versa now. He might not believe, but guess what? He says, you know what? I love my wife. I'm not going to have white Jesus on a wall no more. I'm not going to eat pork in here. None of that. I want to keep this family together. Read. Verse 14. Now, this is very pivotal. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Here it comes. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy. I want you to underline that part right there. Else were your children unclean. Else were your children unclean. For example, you're, you're, you're an Israelite, you teach the commandments, right? Your wife or your husband, I'll say your spouse, your spouse is in Christianity worshiping white Jesus. And your children see you keep the high holidays, you keep the commandments. But mommy or daddy worships a white image of, of Jesus, celebrates Christmas and New Year's Eve and all kind of, and the child grows up what? Confused. Confused. Because daddy does one thing, mommy does something completely different. That's what it means. Because if you don't set the house in order, that's what it means. Else were your ch children unclean. But now are they holy. Why are they holy? Because daddy set the house in order. And although mommy or daddy might not believe, they're following uh, 
the guidelines to keep the family together according to the scriptures. Everybody understand that? So, Bishop, I have a question there. Yes. Okay, if that's the case, you know how sister said, sister who said, oh, because of the kids, that's what I stay with them. That's, you, you heard that many times. Mm -hmm. Sister says, because of the kid, that's why I stay with him. But the Bible is clear what he said. Right. But that means that she don't believe. Mm -hmm. She don't believe the word of God. Right. I heard that thing before. Sister said, the kids is young, that's the reason. Because down, down deep inside is not the reason. The reason is, you, uh, in your mind, you say, I just got a house. I got, you know what I mean? It's all about covetous. Mm -hmm. But the Bible is clear about what he said. Right. Because the kid's going to be confused. Now the kid you were spending all the money on, now she go up and go to college, she still follow the white Jesus. Right. Then you're talking about those for the kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister, you, see, you, you stupid as hell. Yep. When, the, when the marriage gets so toxic, because in the household, you're trying to keep the commandments, and your spouse is saying, no, I don't agree with that. And your spouse is adamant. I'm going to eat my pork. I'm going to... Cook it on, remember we had a brother, the wife cooked beef on one side of the stove, pork on the other, and a Christmas tree in a corner over there. The marriage got so toxic. Watch verse 15. Verse 15. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Let them go. Watch this. Now you might say, but they, they're content with staying in the house, but there's confusion in the house. Y'all are arguing because of keeping God's laws or not. That's not Please to dwell because you're fighting now. Read. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God have called us to peace. The brother or sister is not under the, under the bondage of marriage in such cases. Notice this. But God has called us to peace. Is there peace in the house if the two of you are constantly arguing about keeping the commandments or not? That's not peace. Peace is, although I don't believe, I love you. Like we read in Genesis 35. Leah and Rachel obeyed what Jacob said. Now it's going to be vice versa too. It might be the woman that says, you know what? I'm keeping these commandments and I want peace in this house. There got to be peace. The husband will say, you know what? Babe, I don't believe like you believe, but I want to keep peace. I love you. I'm not going to I'm take down my white Jesus. I'm not going to bring this pork into the house. In fact, I'm not even smoking weed no more. I'm going to try to keep this marriage together. That's what that's going into. Now watch this video right here. Watch this. Put it on screen. I'm this is for when you're unequally yoked. Go ahead. Five years of marriage. They plan to raise their three-month-old son together. However, many experts say that the pair's religious differences really could have a huge impact on their co-parenting. Jackson grew up as a Jehovah's Witness, and Almana is Muslim. Some say co-parenting could be easier if the pair decided on just one faith to raise the child under. Others say it should be up to the child as they grow older. Joining us now to talk more about this, uh, to consider, you know, when co-parenting with different religions is our relationship expert and pastor, Derek Triplett. Derek, good to see you. Oh, oh God. You. What do you think about that? Should, should people, you know, switch religions or whatever when they get married and do, as they're raising kids, or is it okay? This is very, very tough. There is no easy answer to this question. One of the things you have to look Pause at, it. especially when I you want you to see how this Christian pastor, let's see if he brings forth any scriptures about the subject. Of one believes and one don't believe. Go ahead. Dealing with Middle Eastern religions versus Western religions, it's very, very different. It's very, very difficult. Some people, especially with Western religions, have a very passive approach to their religion. Uh, yeah, I'm Christian. Yeah, but we don't really go to church. We don't. But when your belief system. <laughs> determines your actual behavior, that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, right. absolutely, because it, for many people, their religion is their way of life, yes. right? Okay, so, and this is probably even more common that what we see in the United States is you have one parent who's Jewish and one parent who's Christian, mm -hmm. and they celebrate both holidays. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? It's a great idea. It allows the child to be very aware of both religions. It Stop also it. allows... You see that? That's confusion right there. This, these, these Christian pastors are dumb as a rock. Go on, play. It's the child that when he or she is older, they can make a choice. Wait, but stop. You know what we got to start doing? Ask what scripture is that, pastor? Give us a scripture in verse, Nooker. That's what we got to start doing because they lie all the time and people believe their lies. Because he don't have answer for that. You heard he's 
uh, 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 stupidity statement, let their child take care of that. That's how stupid our people are. Because they don't have the solution, they cannot go to the scripture. Hey, let's, let's, let's do both now. Let the child take care of that down the line. That's a stupid mindset. Go ahead. Forming both ways, and that's the critical thing. When you're dealing with Muslim versus Christian or Muslim versus Jewish, that's a total different thing. Right. You're dealing with behaviors. You're dealing with views on women. You're dealing with dress. You're dealing with what is conservative and what is not as it relates to women. It's going to be a very, very difficult thing for them. But for Western religions, it's, a, it's important to just inform, 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 Stop. and then the child makes He's letting you know Western religion, Christianity, he's talking about is garbage. You don't have to keep nothing if you are a Christian. You could be a slut from hell, and it's okay with Jesus. That's what he's saying. He says, but the Eastern religions, and in case y'all didn't know, brothers and sisters, the Bible is Eastern. The Bible is not Western. Okay? The Bible dictates how to dress, how men should dress, how women should dress. Christians don't apply nothing the Bible says. That's why it's a filthy, bloody religion. And that's why a lot of women draw to it. I can shake my butt. I can show my breastesses and do what I want to do. I'm with that one. And you try to bring them the Bible. Sister, cover your breastesses. Cover your behind. Why? Ew. No, that's not right. That's why a lot of them are going to die here in America. Come as you are and stay as you be. Play on. It's a decision after if, if you raise in two religions, don't we also instill in a child a sense of tolerance as well? Because, um, and that is, seems to be what's lacking in the world, is an intolerance towards other religions. And if you say, well, this is what mommy believes, this is what daddy believes, you get to decide as you get older what you believe, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, it's okay to think uh, differently than someone else. I can still love this person and yet have a different faith. It's a great point. Tolerance is so very, very important. I don't think it's the mom and the dad. Wait, wait, stop right there. I got to tell you, that's a lie. That's a lie. You ever have so-called Edomite or white friends at work or whatever, and the moment you tell them you believe Christ is black, that friendship is over. It's kaput. They be like, what? God is black. Jesus, we're Edomites. You're an Israel. They will hate your guts. It has happened with many brothers and sisters. We've seen it. We've experienced it. Play on. And the issue in many cases, it's the extended family. Yep. What does the extended family, this is our beliefs. Why aren't you bringing up my grandson this way? Why aren't you bringing up my granddaughter this way? It is the extended family, which means there's going to have to be some Pause conversations. Right the conversations you got to have with your extended family, meaning either your family or her family, because some family members want to impose their filthy. You ever see these Christians? You got to have the tree. Let them make their own mind up and celebrate Christmas. In one voice, you said, let them make up their own mind. And the second sentence was, put a Christmas tree up. Let them celebrate Christmas. Well, which one is it? These Christians, and it's these Christians that don't, you're, you're oppressing the children, having them not eat pork. Let that boy eat pork. Let him eat the pork. Simple and wicked as hell. And this is why many times you try to keep the family at a very safe distance so that you can sit down and explain to them, these are our customs, these are what we believe. It's either you respect us or not. Let the family make the decision. Once they say they're not respecting you in that, what you say in the Bible, they, listen, we we're just going to say shalom on the phone. But no, you're not coming over here, and I'm not going over there if you can't respect us. Yeah, a brother called me earlier this week. He have a daughter that go to college. But the daughter was with him. She keeping their commandments. Now she go hanging with their grandmother while she go to college. Now they see a picture of her wearing pants. Their father said, you know the, the woot in here. She said, uh, 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 like she confused. You understand that? To showing you what we're trying to show you, what you just said, these people keep them away from you. You understand? Now she don't have no answer why she wearing pants. Like she confused. Like uh, uh, the pants just, uh, uh, pants, uh, just, that's confusion. The Lord, the, the Lord hate confusion. That's why you guys don't understand. That's why you have to keep these people far away from you. And again, we're talking about family members that don't respect you. Some family members, they'll be good with you. We're not talking about those family members. So I don't want to, but they destroy family. No, 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 no. We're talking about family members that interfere in your marriage, trying to destroy what you're trying to build. 
Those are the ones who's toxic and dangerous. Everybody understand that? Okay. Play on. That are layered out throughout the family to say, here's the situation that we're in. My advice to people is before you get married, talk this through. Sure, yeah. Don't get in this situation this if you absolutely, job. because it's difficult once you get there. I'm curious, I just want to follow up on that. Do you think it's generational that, that you know, older generations maybe are, are not as tolerant and as, as you know, the, the newer generations maybe a little bit more open-minded? Well, you, you've, you've got to understand that one, the older you are, the deeper the roots. Sure. So true. And yep. so it may not simply be a matter of intolerance. It's a matter of my strength and my commitment to this faith may be a lot stronger than someone you. who's in their 20s. Right. And sometimes it's the religion that's intolerant, and, and that makes it challenging too. So. Absolutely. It's tough. The best thing to do is make sure that in the dating process, you talk through this and understand your core beliefs are not going to change just because you fell in love with someone. Somebody. True. You have to make sure that they can handle what your core beliefs are. That's a great point. Derek, how can our viewers find you? Derek Triple. Okay, stop com, right there. So we want to thank Pastor Dumbass for not knowing the Bible, not knowing the scriptures. And there's no no, there's no discussion. You're a, a you don't believe in the Bible. There's no reason for us to sit down and try to make a marriage together because Second Corinthians 614, once again, yes, God has laid it out for you right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and um, <clears throat> verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So what's the discussion about? God says don't do it. Man is telling you sit down and discuss it. No! Sisters, don't sit down with a man that don't believe and want to have a marriage. Brothers, don't sit down with a pretty sister who don't believe and try to have a marriage. It's going to end badly. It has always ended badly. They showed Janet Jackson. Y'all know she got the hell out of Dodge away from the Arab guy. She Christian, he Muslim. Okay, she ran the hell away from there. She said, I can't deal with this. I can't show my titties. I can't show my behind. I can't shake it. He was like, no, you can't do that. The Bible says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Give me the next video about Canada. Next video. Canada AM. Yes. And welcome back. Easter and Passover are two of the holiest celebrations on the calendar. With that in mind, we wondered this. What happens in families that have more than one religion or where one parent is more religious than the other? Our parenting panel today. Wait, pause right there. Found they got three people on a panel. I want you to listen to who makes sense and who does not. You're going to see some dummies up here on the podium. Well, listen to see who makes some kind of sense. Play of the Multiple Mayhem Mama newsletter. We love it. Samantha Kemp Jackson is here, plus professor of music at York University, Sundar Viswanathan, and the founder of Parent Tested, Parent Approved, Sharon Vingerine. Great to have the three of you on today. Thanks for having Thank us. You. Let me start with you, Sharon, if sure. I can. So you are Jewish. Yes. Your faith is important to you. You observe some of the dietary restrictions. Your husband, less so. Less so. How tricky is that? So we had an agreement before we got married. We, we had a very frank discussion and I explained to him how a lot of the holidays I'm much more traditional than he is and that it was very important to me for our children to be more traditional until they were old enough to decide on their own. So he was very open, honest and said, listen, I will do it in the home. I will do things that are important to you. Outside of the home, I'm going to choose to do it the way I'm comfortable. So in the Jewish faith, you don't eat pork mm. in the home at all, period. Um, so my husband will choose to eat that. But outside of the home, he won't bring it into the home. And he sets a good example for the kids because he knows how important it is for me. Stop! Sandar, you're Hindu. Stop right there. That right there. No, 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 no. Notice what she said. It caused, it does, it, what is, what's the, back it up, something she just said. The end. About confusion. Go back. Come on, man. Period. Um, so my husband will choose to eat that, but outside of the home, he won't bring it into the home, and he sets a good example Stop! for the kids. He sets a good example for the kids. That's what I wanted to get to. She's saying, in the house, and believe it or not, this is what we're reading. Give me second, First Corinthians 7 again. And verse, I want the woman part. Verse 14. Verse, verse, 13. verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13. And the woman which hath an husband that believeth not, 
And if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. The pleased to dwell means he's going to, the household is going to be at peace. Whatever you, whatever you're following that Bible, I'm going to abide by to keep this family together because I love you. Why? So that he can be a good example to the children. The children see one faith, one understanding. There's no confusion in the home. Everybody understand that? Yes, That's pleased to dwell. That's what it's talking about. Back to the video now. It's because he knows how important it is for me. Sundar, you're Hindu. Your yeah. wife is Catholic. Mm -hmm. And you have two daughters. A son and a daughter. A son and a daughter. Yeah. The older one goes to Catholic school, correct? That's right. This has got to be somewhat tricky for you to navigate as well because Easter's coming up. Yeah. Well, um, think about the both of us, my wife and I. We're both, um, we have our different faiths that we, we were brought up in or that we, our backgrounds, but we're more, we're spiritual in our, in our, in our bent towards thinking about religion. But uh, I'm open for my daughter to go to Catholic school. Um, the different things that she's talking about in Catholic school, I think there are a lot of fundamentals that connect with uh, Hinduism and with other faiths, for that matter. Uh, so it's really about, uh, for her, she's only four, so right. So we're just starting to address these issues. And we went to uh, church on Sunday, Palm Sunday. We all went to church. And, uh, you know, when we talk to her about things, she comes back from school and says, you know, Jesus did this, Jesus, and et cetera, et cetera. And, I'll say, and then she'll say, well, who is Jesus, and this and that. And mm -hmm. then I'll try to explain to her, um, about, uh, you know, how this is one way of looking at the teaching or one person's view of God or one religion's view of God, but that several religions uh, have different names for, for God and we're, we all have the same sort of foundations. And, right. You know, it's, right now it's fairly simple because they're young. Sure. Uh, I, I can't say I have the answers yet for later on. Right. Um, but I think to keep it as simple as possible right now and, and make the kids realize, or at least my, our older kid, Realize that religions are connected. There are a lot of things that connect religions, and that's what's important to Lie. me and my wife. Sure. Um, rather, so it's more about the teachings than the teacher. Um, more about the message than and and how you know who is relaying the message. Um, so those are the kind of things we we, we were talking to our daughter about. And, right. and And there were some things that came up on Sunday. For instance, the word crucifixion uh, and uh, blood came up quite a bit on sure. Sunday. So she was asking some questions and. I haven't figured out how to broach those exactly yet. Oh, Let's God. bring in this the into the conversation as well. So yeah. you have a oh, big family. A I do. And you consider yourself to be lapsed Christians. Yes, Sometimes lapsed you feel Christian. a little guilty <laughs> about this situation. What's I, it like for you? I do. Um, I'm, I'm culturally Christian. I was raised in the Christian tradition. We went to church on Sundays. I went to Easter. You know, Easter Sunday was a big deal. Um, I'm not really a religious person, but I'm spiritual. I believe in a God, but I'm not, you know, following the religious part of things. But we do celebrate Easter and Christmas and those types of things. That's your Christian. My husband's not religious at all. So Wait, I think it's stop. Right. Notice what she said. She said, my husband is not religious at all. She grew up in a Christian church. Notice how she identified herself a lapsed Christian. She joined with that man. He, probably he made money, good looking. She said, you know, I'm going to join with him. But she already knew he don't believe in nothing. So now what she grew up learning, she's what she called lapsed. She don't do nothing. Now she just celebrates. Christmas once in a while. Go back to the beginning of her speech, a little spiel of the black woman. You, she, she never let you down when it comes to stupidity. Some of them. Go ahead. Guilty <laughs> about this situation. What's I, it like for you? I do. Um, I'm, I'm culturally Christian. I was raised in the Christian tradition. We went to church on Sundays. I went to Easter. You know, Easter Sunday was a big deal. Um, I'm not really a religious person, but I'm spiritual. I believe in a God, but I'm not, you know, following the religious part of things. But we do celebrate Easter and Christmas and those types of things. My husband's not religious at all. So I think it's really important to teach kids what your background is. But as you said, Wait, pause. Um, Give me that scripture in Proverbs with says the way of the the righteous is more at proverbs 12, 12 and 26 yes, yes this is sisters when you decide to marry you find this good looking man you know he believes in nothing but you decide you decide you want to join with this man this is what happened with this sister and it's going to happen with you sisters if you don't listen read proverbs chapter 12 verse 26 the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor that's the brother or sister that's in the scriptures following go ahead but the way of the wicked seduceth them. But the way of the wicked seduces them. You hook up with a man or woman that believes nothing or they're lapsed. They're going to, it says they will seduce you. But the way of the wicked seduces them. Go ahead. Was that it? Yes, sir. That was it. Yes, sir. All right. So that's what's going to happen. It's not if, ands, or buts. Back to the video. 
commonality between a lot of the different religions. And I think with most religions mm -hmm. and most traditions, um, you realize that there are some things that are similar. So treating people nicely, you know, being empathetic, being kind. Um, I think those are commonalities that we can find from a lot of faiths. So it doesn't matter if it's Judaism, if it's Hinduism, if it's Christianity, there's many commonalities there. Yeah, there's that's like important to teach kids. The basics. And what do you hope for your kids, Sharon? You know, when you think ahead to what they're going to do and, and, and how important religion may or may not be in their lives when they get older. What do right. you say to them? You know what? I tell them that when they're old enough to make their own decisions, I will Stop. give them that freedom. Mm. Okay, good. Check, check. Hey, um, so you was going over these two religions, watching these videos and things like that. Um, a few, uh, a can year, you take it off the screen so we can see? Thank you. Uh, maybe a year or two ago, it was an order put out with leadership, and we know what it what it is because they was unequally yoked together in the house, right? I was, I'm thinking, meditating on these scriptures you're going over about being unequally yoked uh, with a non-believer, and some of the brothers and sisters, there's a lot of people in IUIC, are still um, yoked together with that non-believer. It just dawned on me about Ezra when, he, um, when he, he had the vision of Christ giving people the crowns. And Ezra and Ezra's asked, who are these that receive these crowns? And, and the angel asked him. And then Ezra said, um, he said, I commended them that stood so stiffly for the uh, name of God, the word of God. So I'm thinking to myself, if you are yoked together with a non-believer, what are you standing stiffly for? It's two different religions in the house. How are you standing up and defending Christ's name? That's something to examine yourself. If you yoke with a non-believer now, don't expect to get that crown that Ezra seen with that number that the Lord, um, his number had been filled. You ain't going to be one of them because you're not standing stiffly. You're just, um, you're, you're a, uh, what was that, that lady said? Um, uh, the Christian, what'd she say? A lapsed uh, Israelite. That's what you are. Yeah, man, think about it, Cap. You know, in, in a house like that, uh, a brother or sister will tell you that the reason that they're, they're dealing with that type of environment is because for kids or because whatever there may be. At the end of the day, you have to uh, make up your mind who you stand for, what you stand for. Because guess what? If Christ appeared today, then what you going to say? Every day, that's what they don't understand. Every day your faith is being tried with a wicked man. Every day your faith being tried with a wicked woman. When you're going to realize something wrong with you? You are an unbeliever yourself. But you was, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep that commitment. I got my little fringes. No, you are an unbeliever yourself. Because every day your faith being tried inside that house. You keep failing, keep on failing, but you justify yourself. Say, you know what? I'm of Christ. That's how, that's how our snake the devil is. And the only, the only, I don't know if loophole is the right way, word, but the only loophole that the scriptures give you is if that person is what? Pleased to dwell with you. Meaning what? They're going to be that example in the house. Let's read that again. First Corinthians 7, 12 down. Yes, sir. That's the only, is there, is there another word? I don't know if loophole is the right word. Or just, that's the only justification. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 12 and seven, I mean, seven verse seven. 12. Uh, you started verse 12. Yeah. Verse 12. But to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which have an, a husband that believeth not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. Meaning the unbelieving spouse going to be that example in the home. You want to celebrate Hanukkah? I'm going to celebrate Hanukkah. Babe, you know I really don't believe this, but I'm going to do it because I love you. Uh, you Don't eat pork? Okay, I'm not going to eat pork. I'm not even going to buy it no more. Uh, give me another example. Uh, if it's the woman, you don't want me wearing pants, I'm going to get rid of all these pants. I'm going to put on a skirt. No biggie. Okay, I'm going to wear a bra and panties too. Because she's nasty. She didn't used to do them things. Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. The unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Why? Why are they sanctified? Because given time, that unbeliever could start going, you know what? There's something to this. I, 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 I see what you've been saying all this time. Here's the proof. Give me uh, 1 Peter 3, 1. Here's the proof. 
the evidence to explain. First, right, this is our first Corinthians 7, 13 goes with first Peter's 3 and 1. Yes, sir. About going to explain to please the dwell. Watch this. Yes, sir. First, uh, first Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. If any of your husbands don't obey the word, they don't believe. Read. They also may without the word be. They also may, although they don't know the word. Be won by the conversation of the wives. You see that part right there? Be won by the conversation of the wives. The key is be won. You win them over. That's what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 7. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Verse 2. While they behold your chaste conversation. While they behold your chaste conversation, meaning your conversation which is scriptural. Go ahead. Uh, chaste conversation with coupled with fear. Coupled with fear means he's watching you, observing you. Keep not just talk the commandments. You are living it, sister. You are living it. You don't talk the way you used to talk. In fact, you don't dress the way you used to dress. He says this woman done did a whole one eighty on me. She has changed. And guess what? She ain't that rabble rouser she used to be. Always giving me hell. She's quiet now. Guess what, man? I got me a queen up in here. That man will say, you know what? There's something to that. Didn't we just read that in Romans that you may prove what is that? I can't quote. Y'all know I can't quote. Yes, sir. Good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Yes, you good right there. That's the saying the same thing. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians 7. Yes, sir. Read verse 14 again, Bishop? Yes, please. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 14. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. And the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean. Meaning, if you don't do it that way, both of you being an example in the home, following, doing what the scriptures say, although one don't believe, your children will be unclean. Meaning, they will be mentally and spiritually confused. That's what it's saying. Go ahead. But now are they holy. But now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart. But now it's so toxic because you keep fighting about God's laws. Let it's him, so toxic. The unbeliever says what? Read it again. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. Mm -hmm. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God have called us to peace. Now let me explain that verse right there. Y'all know what it means, but let me get a little more detailed with it. Just want to get a little more detailed with it. There have been situations where the unbelieving in the house says, I don't believe. I'm going to eat my pork. I'm going to dress how I want to dress. I'm not doing nothing the Bible says. But I'm going to stay here. I'm pleased. I'm going to stay here with you. And makes the believer's life a living hell. Brings pork into the house. Brings uh, cigarettes, weed into the house. And it's, the house is total chaos. I want you to see something. It says, but if the unbelieving depart, let them depart. You're thinking that, okay, some cases the unbelieving just might walk out. But as we keep reading, watch. A brother or sister is not under bondage in such cases, meaning bondage of marriage. Here it comes. But God hath called us to peace. Why is it saying that? Because you will get some spouses who will not leave the house. They will sit there at their behinds right there and make your life a living hell. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Let them, that got to end. It says, but God has called us to peace. He didn't call us into this truth to be fighting every, from sun up to sun down. We just fighting. He want to have sex on the menstrual. You telling the man not to have sex with you on your menstrual. He didn't want to hear it. Babe, that's how we got together. You're showing him the law. He didn't want to hear it. Now he's forcing you. What, what are you going to do, sister? What are you going to do now? You have to make a decision. She's going to go in uh, Jeremiah. She's going to trim her way to be loved. She goes, okay, okay, don't do it. Don't do it down. I do it up. <laughs> don't do it down, I'll do it up <laughs> because she, she planned to justify her wickedness mm -hmm. exactly, read on verse 16 for what knowest thou, O wife whether thou shalt save thy husband you know why it's saying that because you believing sisters if your husband don't believe but he's pleased to dwell with you he's going to be that good example and he's watching you and listening to you he might change that's what it means when it says, for what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband. There's a chance with him living the right example because of you, he might really amend and change his life and repent. 
That's what Paul is saying. Go ahead. Or how, or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? Everybody, and now it's the vice versa. Now, because she was pleased to dwell with you, she's wearing a skirt, she covers her head when you go over scriptures with her, or you know she don't believe. But in time, she may say, you know what? Babe, you really changed. You don't smoke weed no more. You don't even curse me out the way you used to curse me out. There's something to that Bible. You know what? I want to change my life too. And now she repents. That's what Paul is saying there. Read. Verse 17. But as God have distributed to every man, as the Lord have called every one, so let him walk. And so ordain I in all churches. Mm -hmm. is, is any man called being, un, being circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Talking about in the mind, in the spirit. You can't become uncircumcised in your rod. It's talking about in your mind. Don't give up. You came in that tr in the truth. You were keeping, you, were, you followed the Lord's circumcision. Those were the Jews at the time. Okay? Paul says to those Jews that came in circumcised, keeping the, every bit of the Levitical law, he says, don't become uncircumcised. Don't stop doing what you're doing because you grew up like that. Read. Let him not be un become uncircumcised. Is, is any call an uncircumcision? Those were the Gentile Israelites. Go ahead. Let him not be circumcised. Don't follow animal sacrifices. You're in Christ. Just follow it. You don't got to do what our brethren the Jews are doing with uh, sacrifice here, sacrifice there. You're in Christ now. That's what was going on at the time. Go ahead. Verse 19. Circumcision is nothing. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. Jew and Gentile Israelite, that's none of that's anything but. But the keeping of the commandments of God. All the Lord's looking for is us keeping the commandments, whether you were a Jew raising the uh, law of Moses or a Gentile Israelites. Okay? Keep the commandments. That's the bottom line. Read. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Right, so if you was called following the law of Moses, the Levitical law, as a Jew, keep that. Don't change. If you was uh, brought up, uh, you was a Gentile, you didn't know nothing, now you're learning about Christ. Keep that. Read. Verse 21. Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. Right, because some of us came in this truth. We were servants. Like it says in uh, it was in Exodus uh, is it 23 about a Hebrew servant? Anybody know what I'm talking yes, about? Is it 23? 21. 21. Thank you. Yes, sir. Read. Uh, verse 22. For he that is called in the Lord, being a servant, is the Lord's free man. Likewise, also, he that is called being free is Christ's servant. Read. Ye are bought with a price. Be not ye the servants of men. Right. Read. Brethren. Christ gave his life for us. He, he paid for us. Go ahead. With his sacrifice. Read. Brethren, let every man wherein he is called uh, therein abide with God. Now concerning virgins, I have no commandment of the Lord. Yet I give my judgment as one that have obtained mercy of the Lord to be faithful. Virgin I, meaning young girl of marriageable age. She has not had sex. Go ahead. I suppose, therefore, that, 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 excuse me, that this is good for the present distress. I say that it is good for a man to, so to be. Mm -hmm. Art thou bound unto a wife? Are you married when you come into this truth? Seek not to be loose. Don't look for reasons to leave your spouse. That's what Paul is saying. Go ahead. Art thou loose from a wife? Did you come in this truth single? You were loose from a, You already had your divorce. Now you come in his truth, you're single. Go ahead. Seek not a wife. Don't be chasing after. Don't let that be your priority. Go ahead. But, and if thou marry. But he says, if you do decide to marry. Thou hast not sinned. You have not broken no commandment. And if a virgin marry. And if a young girl marries. She have not sinned. She's not sinned either. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. You're going to have fights. You're going to have problems in your marriage. It always happens. Go ahead. But I spare you. Meaning I'm just warning you. Go ahead. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Meaning put the Lord first. Do not put your wife first, you simp. That's what he's saying. Put God first in your life, not a woman. All right, read. Verse 30. What time is it? And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess not. Read. And they that use this world as not abusing it. So uh, that part right, and they that use this world as not abusing it. I would just want to, I just want to segue with that. If you come into this truth and you are on section eight, you are on welfare, that's fine. 
But the Bible says, use this world as not abusing it. Don't make that your life mission to be a welfare queen or king or a section eight brother or sister. Start to upgrade and improve and transform your life. Become an entrepreneur, okay? Get a business or get a job, whichever you prefer. Use this world, but don't abuse it. Go ahead. For the fashion, for the fashion of this world passeth away. Read. But I would have you without carefulness. I want you to be without worry. Go ahead. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belongeth to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. That's why through the whole chapter, Paul was saying, I wish you could be like me. Don't have a wife. Don't be married so that you can dedicate your life 100% to the Lord. Go ahead. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. He said, but if you're married, you have to care for the things of the world. Go ahead. How he may please his wife. How he may please his wife. That's the stipulation in marriage. Yes, you love the Lord of heaven and earth, but you also got to divide your attention with your spouse. How to please your wife. Go ahead. Verse 34. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman caring for the things of the Lord, that she may be holy, both in body and in spirit. But she that is married care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. Now it says, now that married sister, she also got to do the things of the world, how to please her husband. You heard that? You research sisters. Do the things of the world, how you may please your husband. Get the jelly. Whoa, bring the bed. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 35. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but but for that which is common. But for that which is beautiful. Go ahead. And that ye may attend may attend upon the Lord without distraction. See what Paul said? I want you to attend unto the Lord without distraction. If you're married, you will have a distraction because you got to divide your time. But remember what he said, let him that is mad. How does it go? Time is short. No. It remains if they're both there to have wives, be as though they have none. He said, keep that in mind. Let God be your focus. Go ahead. Verse 36. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly towards his virgin. Because many times brothers were uh, engaged, or the word is betrothed to virgins that they didn't deal with for a while. Go ahead. If she passed the flower of her age. Meaning she's gone into menopause. She has passed the flower of her age. Because back then, betrothal meant just that. She could not run out. You're taking too long to marry me. And now she goes against somebody else. That was not during the Bible times. You, she was betrothed to you. She's yours. Go ahead. Read it again. If, yes, sir. But if any man think that he behaveth himself uncommonly towards his virgin, if she passed the flower of her age and needs so require, let him do what he will. He sinned if not. Let them marry. Right, let them marry. Consummate the marriage. That's what he's saying. She's older now. She's past the flower of her age, meaning the flower of her youth. She's in the menopause stage. Marry her. Consummate the marriage now. What you waiting for? Go ahead. Verse 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity. Having no necessity, meaning what? Verse 9 again. Read verse 9. Verse 9. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. For it is better to marry than to burn. Now verse 37 again. Verse 37. Nevertheless, he that standeth steadfast in his heart, having no necessity. He's not burning sexually. Go ahead. But have power over his own will. He's disciplined in his own mind. Go ahead. And have so decreed in his heart that he will keep his virgin, do it well. He said, oh, no, I'm not going to consummate it. I'm just going to keep her around. Go ahead. 38. So then he that giveth her in marriage, do it well. But... He that giveth her not in marriage doeth better. Because there's no distraction. Go ahead. The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. Meaning the widow, she has to only marry somebody in the truth. Go ahead. But she is happier if she so by uh, after my judgment. Meaning stay single. Go ahead. And I think also that I have the spirit of God. So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom. All praises.
All praise, all praise to Mosai. Uh, we want to thank, uh, we got a couple of brothers come down to support. Thank you, brothers. Got Officer Galilei. Uh, thank you, thank you, all your brothers. I see Mississippi here, Jacksonville here, uh, Alabama is here. What else we got over there? That's it? Huh? And then I got uh, Memphis, Captain Yedan. Captain Yeden, <laughs> Captain Yeden, Captain Maritais, Captain Osi, Captain Zakar. Oh, what's we got over there? Who got over there? Oh, I always forget Tazawan. I always forget his name because he barely come out. <laughs> Tazawan. And of course, Deacon Laba. Hey, that was a good class, Bishop. Give Bishop another hand. This is the most, uh... Oh, poor Cap. Anything else? Yes, drop there. No. All right, Israel. We love you. That's it. Brothers and sisters, also continue to keep your prayers up for those that are sick amongst us in the body. Uh, also keep your prayers up for the house of Captain Zephaniah. All right. Sister Amina. All right. Um, hold on. I do right. got He's, one announcement. Got one announcement? Taken. Go ahead. Um, so I know a lot of us have um, discovered um, Clubhouse. Um, if you have an iPhone. Um, <laughs> Want to make sure, you know, Israel, we never read the actual rules and regulations of, um, of Clubhouse. Um, so it's a new app. Um, when you actually read the guidelines, um, there's certain things that you can't do. Uh, I'm not going to throw anybody names out, but apparently um, they were live streaming and pay-per-viewing for those that don't have an iPhone. Um, that's actually against the rules. No, no, there was Deacon IBM. <laughs> you ain't calling no name. I'm going to call you. <laughs> So I'm just going to read the rules real quick. Uh, these are the community guidelines because we don't want y'all to get kicked out. Um, it says you may not transcribe, record, or otherwise reproduce or share information obtained in the clubhouse without prior permission. So when y'all in our groups, when we run the groups, um, that's fine. But other groups, if you screenshot stuff and put it out there, um, the, you're liable for them to um, report you, so on and so forth. So just make sure we are um, following in accordance and Lord's will uh, will bring a lot of souls in through that thing. And just to add to that, uh, I hope you all heard a uh, epic thrashing on Clubhouse last night by the bishop and the deacons. It was epic. So for those of you who bootlegged it, have the copy when someone's walking past the screen in your video, you know when you bootleg a movie? Yeah, some of y'all got that version. Somebody walked past it. But for those of you who were in there, listen, camp was in Clubhouse last night. That was camp. So let's give the Lord a round of applause for another avenue for this truth going out, man. Check, check. Cap and we hey, even had the sister was in there, man, doing their thing up in there. That's good stuff. Just wanted to mention this too real quick with that um, the Clubhouse app. Don't go in there and shame the ministry. Right, right, Some right. of you brothers that um, are working your way through the ranks to get to be able to teach on the street, do not substitute Clubhouse for you not being able to go on the streets now passing the MOV and you on there uh, shaming everything that we trying to build and bringing our people in and you letting these damn uh, upgrade Christians confound you, and, and now we got to go back and clean up your mess. Wait, if the scriptures talk about um, when it comes to teaching, wait on your ministry. Let the bishops, deacons, and captains, and whoever they choose to represent as far as IUIC, because they know who we are. Our speech berayeth us. <laughs> but whoever they choose, you fall in line with that and, and let them handle that. Elisha, you got anything? Oh, also, during class, don't let Clubhouse become a stumbling block to your spirit, and you secretly got Clubhouse in one damn earphone, and you listen to Bishop on the other one. That's out of order. 
Uh, yeah, and you sisters that are that are on there, um, you know, we got a, a group that's called uh, Biblical Smoke right now. If, you know, you can hop on there when you see us going on there, and you can possibly, if you get called up, you can, uh, um, you know, have your two, three minutes or whatever they we give you to, to speak on behalf of whatever the topic is. So don't be afraid. It's called Biblical Smoke. Right. I uh, praise the sisters that have studied. You can tell the sisters that study. When they right. open their mouth, you oh, that sister right there study. If you know you ain't study system, please shh, just listen. All right, uh, not anything else. All right, Israel. With that, we love you. We say shalom. We see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Tomorrow, uh, happy Sabbath, Israel. Happy uh, Sabbath. Yeah, man. Don't forget tomorrow at twelve. I'll be tuning in. Tomorrow at twelve, right? Tomorrow at twelve.